Good morning, everybody. I'm hoping uh, <laughs> I'm hoping the sound and everything's working. Can you give me a thumbs up so you could see and hear me okay? Appreciate it. Morning, Squatch. Sam, how you doing? Yeah, <laughs> well, definitely in the uh, in the morning, uh, in the afternoon in the UK. Good morning, Don. Robert, how's it going, buddy? Squatch, what's up, bud? Is uh, the audio good? Give me a thumbs up or a wave or a hi or a yep, all good, something like that. Appreciate it. Rolling outdoors. T-Rex slings in the house. How you doing, buddy? Good, good, good. So the sound is good. Lone Wolf Caddy Flinker, how you doing, bud? Ooh. Been a bit of a hectic morning. <laughs> a little bit flustered, gotta be honest. Oh, I'm knocking you guys around. <laughs> Sorry for that. Let's see if we can fix this up here so I don't trip on this thing all the time. Whoa, you saw my disaster? Yeah. All right, let me see if I can get that. There we go. Oh, man. So how are you guys doing? What's going on? What's been happening today? Anybody can do some shooting this afternoon? Well, so far, Rob, uh, things are interesting, <laughs> to say the least. I guess that's the best way to say it. Um, probably the first quiet morning I've had in quite a while. Uh, for those of you who follow me on uh, on Instagram, you, I guess you know what was going on the last uh, last little bit, but uh, yeah. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit later, I guess, how, what happened and uh, why I'm looking so damn scruffy, but it's been uh, a couple of days since I shaved, been pretty busy, so we'll see how it goes. I got caught in a huge downpour while shooting. <laughs> oh, no, no. Absolutely soaked. Oh, man. Got to tell you, these last wedding last night's fence repair today. Ooh. <laughs> I hope the hangover isn't too, uh, too, too sturdy today at our T-Rex. I know a wedding's a... Uh, up here in Canada, that we tend to throw down. <laughs> it gets pretty bad. Yeah. It's a good thing they usually have them on Saturdays up here because uh, whew, Sundays will be brutal. <sighs> yeah. Busy, busy, busy. So, I'm... Uh, if you guys are wondering what's going on with the giveaway winner, I'll be announcing that that winner today. Uh, I'll be releasing a, I'll be releasing a video uh, sometime after this. I'm like halfway through editing it. Um, I tried to get it done last night. I just didn't have time. But uh, anyway, I did some shooting with one of my new frames I got from uh, Omega Slings. And I got this little beauty here, uh, the Vinix from uh, Harley Davidson, Davidson, and I got to tell you. The fact that this dude is not blowing up all over the place baffles the shit out of me. His, his craftsmanship with wood is on a whole other level. His quality, everything that he puts into these frames is just insane. Like, I can't believe it. I went out and I shot this thing yesterday uh, while I was filming the, uh, the giveaway winner um, video. And it's on a whole other level, his, his craftsmanship. It's incredible. Fit and finish is second to none. It's an absolutely beautiful frame. And the fact that he's able to get wood so smooth, so pretty, and so well designed. I mean, this thing just fits inside of your, inside of your palm. So nice. I got to tell you. 
it, it, it blew my mind. Blew my mind. I'm a huge, huge fan of Harley after uh, after shooting uh, one of his frames. The only the only drawback I find about these wood frames is that they're so damn light. It almost feels like you're not holding anything. <laughs> what do we got going on here? Good news. Ethan took third place at ACC. No way. Congratulations. Largo, how you doing, buddy? Where am I from? I'm from Canada, my friend. Oh, really? No, no joke, Robert. His his design, the Vinix, is a fantastic frame. It's kind of like a... It's kind of got like a... I don't know. It kind of reminds me a little bit Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Titan Hunter. I mean, it's similar in design, just a little bit more pointy in the corners, I guess. But and it kind of kind of comes down a little more. But the the the, the way it holds is just like on a whole other level. Oh man, I hope uh, I hope Ethan shows up today so we can uh, give him a. Give him a, a fucking round of applause, man. That's that's freaking awesome. Morning, Brent. That's that's super great news. Andy, how's it going, buddy? Hillbilly Sling the Wares, how you doing, man? Alfie, how you doing? Sell one slingshots. How you doing, my friend? Michael Gad, good morning. Wow, we got people pouring in here now. Imran, how you doing? How could I purchase the same? I'm from India. You got to hit up um, Harley Davison on Facebook. Talk to him there, or you can order uh, directly from Omega Slings. Um, the shipping will probably be cheaper from Indonesia to you than from America to you, but uh, you do, do as you wish. But uh, head up, uh, talk to Harley Davison on uh, Harvey Davison Slings on Facebook, and he'll take care of you. Taylor Maid, good morning. Good morning, Mark, and everyone else. Good morning, Mr. Taylor Maid. How you doing, my friend? So what do you got going on this morning? A boot hill? Shoot sweet. Talk to me about this boot hill, uh, T-Rex. Who makes it? What's the deal? <sighs> Just got home from work. Ooh, that's rough. What was your shift? You doing the work in a graveyard or what? Work in a graveyard shift? Man, glasses are nasty. There we go. Juicy Jumbo, good morning from Tennessee. Well, good morning to Canada. Right back at you, buddy. Yeah, 11 to 7. Ooh, that's a tough shift, buddy. That's a tough shift. I've only done it a few times, but... I mean, uh, when the back in my day when I was working, you know, I'm still working in the steel industry. It was it was actually a blessing <laughs> to to work on the uh, on the third shift. <clears throat> it was just me and another operator. We used to operate a a, a big hide mech uh, bandsaw, and nobody would nobody would bother us at all. Imran, the name is Harley Davison Slings, and you'll find him on Facebook.
Yeah, definitely better than second shift. And less than usually less busy um, on the first shift. No other uh, BS going on. So that was kind of nice. Thanks, Rob. Putting that up. Okay, how you doing? Thanks for the stickers. Looking pretty cool. Jack Dawson, how you doing, my friend? Happy Sunday. Uh, Taylor Made, he absolutely is. And I've seen his I've seen his stuff on um you know on, on Facebook and the pictures and all that stuff before. But it's hard, it's really hard to appreciate how nice his slingshots are until you actually get them in person. The pictures are great, don't get me wrong, but the quality, once you have them in your hand, holy crap. Like this dude is I don't know what to say. I, I can't I can't talk enough. I can't put it into words of how impressive the, that dude is. I thought I got the hell is that on my wall, huh? Big chuck of paint gun. Morning from the Buckeye State. How you doing, Dave Berger? Hi, girl with a name so small I can't read it. Or boy, I don't know yet. But how you doing? Play Super Tramp Logical Song. Can't play any songs on here, buddy, or I'll get demonetized. Bushcraft Rebooted. How you doing, buddy? Hey, uh, Bushcraft Rebooted, I apologize. I couldn't make your live yesterday. Uh, Leon sent me a, a big warning uh, letting me know that you're going on 10 minutes. I was just swamped with stuff yesterday, and I, I couldn't do it. I apologize, but uh, hopefully I'll make the next one. Oh man, there's so many nice ones, Rob. I, I I don't know what to say, man. Like really, after after having this one, I'd really love to get uh, I really love to get um, like a real custom one. Uh, but these are so damn pretty. I, I don't know. I don't know. And uh, you'll see uh, in my in the video I release later on today. Uh, we shoot the I shoot the Vinix uh, just before. Just before um, I announced the giveaway winner, and it's uh, whew, that thing is damn savage, I'm telling you. Oh man, oh man, this coffee is so needed. Shades, what's going on, bro? 45 a.m. I'm nuts. Where are you located, Hilly? You must be on the West Coast somewhere, I'd imagine. As far West Coast as possible. Dude, no worries. I made a mess, got in trouble. Laugh out loud, I'll do it again. How, how did you get in trouble? Oh, uh, Washington State. Rebooted live, put me a seven sub mark. Oh, wow. Really cool. Oh, yeah. So this week has been uh, been pretty interesting. So I think on Tuesday, you did good until the fair run. Ah, oh, man, I'm going to have to go back and watch it. So on Tuesday, or Monday, I guess Monday night, Monday evening, I ended up getting the... Like, oh no. <laughs> Bushcraft rebooted, playing with the fair rod in the house. We've all been there, bro. Every one of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've all been there. Uh, in my basement, I've done a lot of stupid shit. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's got something to do with me and the dude. It's just it's dude problems, man. Our, our, our women will never understand. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally guilty, my friend. Totally guilty. I'll get a custom back full of Vixen soon. Core Vixen soon. Slowly, uh, Shortly before they bought that last batch, he sold me an aluminum cord cogo. 
The cliffs on that is amazing. Man. <gasps> you know, I've seen a couple of his, uh, his, of his frames pop up from time to time, and I was like, oh, man. This guy looks like he does some nice work. And then uh, I saw them pop up. Oh, dude. No way, Jack. Thanks, man. Appreciate you, dude. Just to let you know, uh, Jack, um, from time to time, I post a little bit of a uh, little bit of extra content that some people don't see here, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, also, for giveaways, I tend to add in uh, um, an extra an extra draw for all my uh, all my VIPs. And um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, pretty much it. I'll be giving you a shout out in the video, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I'll be dedicating a, a bullseye to you and, uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we, we, we do for you guys. So uh, I'm really glad you, you joined up, buddy. I appreciate you. Oh man, that's totally awesome. Yep. So yeah, where was I? Uh, no, thanks to you, Jack. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate all of you guys that uh, that support the channel uh, any way you can. Actually, it's just uh, just awesome. <laughs> yeah. So this week, I got I got sick on the Monday night with uh, with the stomach flu, and I was panicking because my son was supposed to be wrestling in the nationals on Thursday, and so I basically had locked myself up in a bedroom for. Uh, Two full days, not leaving at all unless I had to run to a bathroom, and uh, that was pretty much it. So by the time that was done, uh, we made it to Wednesday night. Uh, they packed everything up and left first thing in the morning. Thursday was my first day at work. So get to work, and um, my son starts wrestling at the Nationals, his first appearance. And, man, I was like... I basically I was toasted. I was uh, still still a bit of a mess, but uh, while I was sitting there, uh, you know, putting parts together for our machines and creating projects and buying parts and doing all these things, I had the uh, I had the the tournament up on floor wrestling to watch. And uh, his first match pops up, and he absolutely destroys the guy. Uh, Texts him. Uh, so basically he beat him by 10 points and, uh, the guy didn't score a point on him. So this was great. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Am I, my heart's pounding. I'm all nervous. Second match comes up a couple of, about an hour, hour and a half later. And, uh, he fights this other guy and, uh, destroys him too. Gets him down, um, bangs out four points and pins him. Hits him with a flying squirrel. It was, it was so nice. <laughs> Jumps right over his back, flips the guy over, and just uh, and, and pins him. So there goes the second match. Everything's good. The third, the third match coming up is a uh, <coughs> is a high level, high level guy. For end the first round, he's down. He's down by. Uh, he's down by uh, by seven points at the end of the first round. So it's seven to zero. Comes back halfway through the second round, and it's uh, seven to six. Everything is good. Everything is good, and uh, he ends up getting he ends up getting taken down, and he loses his um, he loses the match. He, he he loses that one nine to three. So he I I thought right away that it was basically a one and done tournament. So if you lose, you're out. It's just whoever wins right to the end. But it wasn't the case. So I was like, oh no, I guess that's it. Three rounds. Here we go. So a three a three rounds. He's out. Uh, he's not going to place, but it doesn't matter. He still uh, had a pretty good performance, and everything's good. Got in my car, drive home. And then on my way home, my wife texts me. He just won his fourth match. Fourth match. I'm like, oh, my God. No way. So sure enough, I race to uh, get home, pop open my phone. He wrestles the next guy. Uh, I watched the match on flow. He ends up beating the guy by, uh, I can't remember if it was uh, 10. I know this guy, again, was 10 to nothing. Destroys him, texts him. And then it seems like he's still got a chance to medal. So he's on, he's on his way. Uh, if he wins two more matches, he's on his way to uh, the bronze medal match at the, at the Nationals on his first showing. 
in the 71 kilos U17. Super, super, super stoked. I'm like, I'm like freaking out now. Sure enough, bang, he's out there. Uh, third, uh, uh, fourth match. What are we at? One, two, three, four. He's in his fifth match and uh, wrestles this guy. Ends up beating him 17, 17 to six. Text that guy too. So, so far in the turn, he's got one loss, three texts, and, and a pin. So he's looking really, really damn good. The next match comes up. If he gets this match, it's going to be good. Wrestles this last guy in the first minute or so. Uh, the ref is telling him that he's stalling. So he has to, uh, they put him on a shot clock. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's basically if they find that you're, you're not being aggressive enough, they put you on a shot clock. You've got 30 seconds to take the guy down uh, or get some kind of point on him or they take a point away from you. And give it to the other guy. So basically what they've done is uh, my son uh, faked, faked a double leg and then went to snap the guy. And then went to snap the guy again, but faked that and went for a double leg. Picked the guy up way up in the air and dropped him down hard. And he smashed his cheekbone on the guy's hip bone. And when he landed, he landed funny with his shoulder. Yeah, my boy was kicking uh, <laughs> kicking ass on older students when he started the sport. Yeah, he was. Uh, anyway, he uh, took the guy down and he got up and he was holding his face. And we're like, oh, no, I think he got poked in the eye. So they had a, they had a little break. They checked him out, make sure everything was good. But I noticed him do this a couple of times. And I was like, oh, oh I hope he didn't hurt his shoulder too. Cringe man. Oh, buddy. See you later, bro. So sure enough, uh, he gets taken down and uh, gets back up. You see him moving the shoulder a little bit, goes back and fights this guy and wins the match 13 to 10, uh, but ends up, uh, ends up going to, the, uh, to go see the trainer later. And the trainer pulls him from the tournament just before the bronze medal match. and. Uh, he was, anyway, all messed up. His shoulder's a disaster. They put him in a sling. And uh, it was a nice, nice long seven-hour seven, seven drive home to get, uh, uh, to get home. And uh, they arrived back home, I guess it was around midnight or so. Uh, the trainer said we should probably go see a doctor, this, that. So we woke up Saturday morning at 7 o'clock and drove to Proto, Ontario, to go see a doctor because in Quebec it's a, it's a shit show here for healthcare. Goes inside there, find out on that takedown, he fractured his shoulder and I had a hairline fracture in his collarbone and finished the freaking match and won. It's just like, dude, you know, nothing, uh, nothing lasting, nothing terrible, but, um, I mean, it's a kind of a sad injury to have. He'll be, he'll be going to, uh, He's got to stay in the sling for the next six weeks or so. But uh, anyway, he's, uh, he'll be back in action. But I think pretty much the, 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 the season's over for him. Uh, that'll be that. Uh, maybe sometimes they have another one they call Battle at the Beach or something or Battle in the Sand where they have this outdoor, uh, outdoor tournament. Um, so he may, be, he may be back ready to go in there. Well, great, yeah, he's in grade 10. Yeah, he's 15. 15 uh, wrestling U17 like a cadet and uh, yeah at 71 kilos yeah so uh, he basically had uh, he finished that uh, that tournament his first uh, first uh, have I ever pooped outside yes sir I have and I'm proud to say so yeah so he basically had uh, uh, three techs one pin one decision um, and it sucks because on on track wrestling when you check it out you see that he uh, he actually uh, has a loss due to injury, but it's not really a loss. And that would have been an epic match because it's a guy he has a big rivalry against here in Quebec. Uh, they're like the probably the the two top guys here in Quebec at that weight at that weight and age. It would have been really cool to uh, to see that battle one more time. <laughs> it would have been great. Anyway, yeah. So yesterday was uh, kind of doing a lot of running around trying to get things done, and uh, that's. That's why I missed the rebooted, uh, rebooted Bushcraft's uh, live yesterday. 
got home and I was just like, man, it, we, were, we were exhausted, got everything done, arrived home. We uh, chilled for a couple of minutes, did a little bit of a cleanup, took the dog for a walk, came back in, cooked dinner. And then we were watching, uh, trying to watch a movie in like eight o'clock. I'm like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> See you guys later. I can't stay awake anymore. Hey, Rob, how's it going, buddy? Oh, dude, he's a tough fella. He's tough. He's tough. He's gritty, scrappy. Actually, he's the thing I'm probably most proud of out of everything I've ever done in my life. Uh, the fact that he's a great athlete is one thing. The fact that he's a pretty good student is another thing. But the fact that he's a good person, I just love being around him. And it's, uh, it's freaking awesome. Makes me proud on a daily basis. Your son will be a, a real man, not a woke fool. Oh, absolutely, dude. <laughs> absolutely. He doesn't he doesn't take any of that shit <laughs> at all. Congrats again, Rob. What did I miss, dude? Did you get that job? Is that what happened? Is that what happened here? How did I deteriorate to this state? I don't know what you're talking about. Squatch, how you doing, buddy? Oh, he... Dude, Rob, congratulations, man. That is awesome news. That's awesome news. What are you going to be doing? Oh, trend walla. How you doing, my friend? We're doing pretty good over here, buddy. We're doing pretty good. CNA work, taking care of people in the world. Oh, that's that's freaking awesome, man. Hollywood. Nope, not Hollywood here, my friend. <laughs> Very far from Hollywood. <laughs> Fazal, how you doing, my friend? Hope I got that right. Mark, would like to hear your detailed pre-shot routine sometimes. I feel I overthink or have too much on my checklist. You know what, Andy? Um, actually, I can go through that now. Um, I used to call it my, you know, pre-shot routine, uh, shot sequence, all that kind of stuff. Um, basically, when I first first started my my channel, uh, I I uh, did this thing this this thing called Quest for Accuracy. Now I know uh, through my um, trying to figure out how I was going to get good at this uh, in the shortest amount of time without uh, embarrassing myself. Uh, the first thing I did was um, have I noticed that I hold my breath and yeah, I do. I know, I know I do it on purpose. <laughs> I do it on purpose every single time. Yeah. It's only for about two or three seconds, but uh, once I, well, let me get to it. <laughs> so um, after shooting, uh, you know, uh, uh, firearms and uh, bow, and uh, moving to slingshots. I had taken what I had learned with the other two uh, disciplines, brought them over to slingshots, and then I was thinking about, well, all of these things aren't any different than golf either, because golf, you got to address the ball, you're going to set up your feet, all these things, and work your way up. You're going to try to keep your form throughout your swing. 
this is all part of it as well. So when I took those things, how to throw a football, how to throw a basketball, firearm shooting, all these things, and I noticed that every single one of these disciplines, regardless of what they are, have a uh, technique to follow, plus a um, basically it. Just a, I'm gonna make try to make this shorter than it needs to be, but uh, anyway, you don't need to know my whole thought process on it. But basically, what I did was is um, when I'm getting up to the line, uh, I have noticed that um, I was gonna implement back tension from archery. I was gonna implement. Uh, I mean, when I shoot, it's it appears that I'm closing my left eye, but I actually I actually just crack it open a little bit just so I'm getting a little bit of the uh, the view from outside, but not enough to interfere with my shot. Um, that's pretty much what I've, what, I, what I've done. So basically, I line up at the target. So I'm basically at a 90 degree with it. And then I take a tiny, like a half step back. So I want to line up the target that I'm shooting at with about three inches above uh, in front of the tip of my toes, if that makes sense. So once I've done that, um, my whole my whole purpose was is to get something that I'm constantly doing on on every on every step. So my first step is just making sure that I have all my gear in my hand where I need it. So uh, I don't have my my uh, my magnet with me, but I I always I just sometimes I used to keep my hand in my pouch. Sometimes I used to keep my 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 stuff in my pockets. Um, but I started wearing a necklace, uh, with all my magnets on it or all my ammo on it. So I would stand in this position, get lined up with exactly what I'm shooting targets about three inches in front of my toes, three, four inches, something like that, not too far out. And then it would be elbows in, everything's nice and tight. I would remove my ball, put it into my pouch, pinch it, and I would just make sure I lined it up in the correct spot in my on my finger. Then I anchor my shot. I stretch out. I start to get on target. I take a breath. I start to slowly release it. I hold and I shoot. And in the beginning, I found that I had a bit of target practice, uh, target panic, and I would flinch a lot uh, before I would shoot, and or, or I'd pluck my. Uh, Pluck it. Um, I would, I'd have a rough release. So in my head, while I was getting ready to shoot that, um, I would try to, um, or I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, <laughs> but, but basically, I set up my shot sequence. So feet together, shoulder width apart. Look down at my target. Target's about three, three feet, uh, three inches in front of my in front of my toes. My gear, my body positioning was standing upright, comfortable, comfortable stance, hands basically in a, in, in close to the hands, everything's uh, to the body, keeping my ammo always in the same spot. And when I was practicing, it was literally comfortable, getting ready to shoot, take my thing, I take my ammo, load my pouch, get to my, get to my position. So actually, I would look at my target first, anchor, stretch it out. Make sure my elbow was high. Breath. Hold. Make sure I got my my ammo, my my um, my fork tip on my target. I would release until I got my fork tip on my target. I'd hold for a second, then release. And I would do this over and over and over again. And in my head, I would constantly be keep the release smooth, keep the release smooth, keep the release smooth, keep the release smooth. In the beginning, it took a long time. To, to to create the muscle memory and the body habit. But as I got there, I just continued to do the same thing and it didn't take long to where all of a sudden now it's just like second nature, you know? And uh, that's it. Um, in the beginning, I did a lot of, I did a lot of um, things that I saw other YouTubers done. And back in that time, there was Fowler and... Uh, and uh, a couple guys from the UK that uh, I could copy uh, to try to get an idea. 
but this is what I did. And when I'm trying to voice it out, it's actually longer than really what it is. Like everything just basically takes seconds. And when I started to do this, um, I did what Fowler did in the beginning is I would draw it to the floor and then bring it up to my face. But when I did that, I was always landing in different spots as in my anchor point uh, spots and I couldn't figure out what was going on. It took me a long time to figure it out. Finally, when I figured it out, I'm like, oh, okay, wait a minute. So in, in archery, I always pull back, but in archery, I always use a double, um, a double, uh, a double anchor. Meaning when I would pull my bow back, I'd always pull it back. My thumb would touch the base of my cheekbone and my fingers would, would touch my corner of my mouth and I would shoot when I was shooting my traditional bow. When I went to my uh, compound, I would pull back and I would lock my, my hand, webbing of my hand into my jaw and I had a kisser button and a peep eye. So I actually had three points. And my, my string would come right across the tip of my nose, like, like if I'm like here, it would come right across the tip of my nose. And I would just, I, I use a trigger uh, when, I, when I shoot with my release, and that's what I would do. But I had like a three-point uh, anchor, so it would come across the tip of my nose, come across here, and I'd have my people, and everything would line up right through as I was looking across with my, uh, with my, with my target. So um slingshot's a little bit different i haven't quite found a really solid uh a solid uh two-point anchor that i could use but it actually would make it better if i could but that's pretty much that's pretty much it i would I'd go through my my shot sequence like this in the beginning being very very conscious of it but it doesn't take long like uh, once you're once you're getting into it for a week or two all of a sudden you're just doing the same thing every single time and um, when you watch that quest for accuracy vlog thing I did in the beginning, I think the first, I was shooting at a 30 mil flipper. I think I was shooting at a 30, 30 or 40 mil flipper in the beginning. And I wanted to see how many times I'd hit it at, at, at 50 shots. And I think the first, the first couple that I ever, the first one I ever did, I only hit it like eight times, which was pretty good. And, uh, by the time I finished I tested it out. I think I hit it somewhere around 35, 35, 37 times, something like that. But when I, when I switched to this is because I was having inconsistent anchor point problems. And I knew that once I, once I get my, my, uh, my thumbnail on my cheekbone, I find that spot. If, if it's not good, and when I'm in my draw, instead of actually pulling it up and drawing it and like moving it around or taking a shot, I'm not stable. I'm not set. My mind, my mind is not focused on, on everything on just the shot. It's focused on trying to get into position and it was causing me issues. And I wasn't making any headway at all like that. Once I switched to anchoring and drawing, um, it became much, much better. And for, I remember when, um, I mean, I just saw a post actually just the other day on, uh, on, on, uh, one of the groups anyway, and some people were criticizing my, my draw method and I was like, okay, that's fine. Oh, it's not safe. It's not this. It's not that. Um, okay. You don't have to do it. You just do you and I'll do me and that's it. But I, uh, I started doing that just to solve some of my issues. And really, if you're using tapered bands, not an issue. And if you check your bands, not an issue. Yeah, it's true. Eh? Andy, I remember you've been around for quite a long time. <laughs> yeah, Dave, uh, Dave wrote here, uh, I did some uh, ETO anchor style shooting yesterday. Uh, feels a lot higher anchor, but I was hitting the same, uh, hitting just the same. I think, I think no matter where you anchor, I think you could use that method if you wanted to, uh, just to make sure that you constantly get back into the same, into the same position. Uh, I think that's, uh, probably a big key that, and, uh, just remembering to really smooth out your, out your release will make a big difference. Trying to, trying to figure out, uh, 
where you could be having an issue is, is tough sometimes because it, it could be you're pushing a little forward with a different frame then a little bit back. Uh, you're slightly canted either, either direction can make a big difference. Uh, um, moving your anchor point around just a tiny little bit, you know, just this and this can make a difference sometimes. So it becomes, uh, it becomes tricky. That's why now when I'm anchoring, I try to put my thumb on, on my nail. No, if it's not it, then I move it over to where, where I know it. It fits. It's where it's supposed to be, and then I know that I got the same spot every single time. That's what I started doing anyway, and it seems to be working. Actually, what are my thoughts on pit pouches? I absolutely love pit pouches. Um, I think they're great. I tend to scuff my face with them all the time though for some reason i don't know what the deal is with pit pouches but it could be that they're a little bit narrower than the the pouches that i use normally for my kangaroo pouches yeah i got about four mil three or four mil difference on there but i find i find the um I find the, the having the pits on them um, give me a better release, believe it or not. I don't particularly like the feel as much as the as the other ones. As the uh, I prefer the feel of the uh, of the leather ones, but I can't deny that I get a better release actually from the pit locating pouches. I just don't use them because of where I anchor. I, I use them uh, still for uh, larger ammo. But when I draw on my face, for some reason, if I really tried to get like a full nice draw out of it, I tend to, uh, it just gives me a little, a little scuff on my cheek as it passes by. And uh, I guess that's it. But otherwise, I shoot fantastic with them. They're great pouches. They flatten out a... They flatten out the ball on, on uh, for you, so it actually feels better with your fingers. You can get longer shooting sessions without hurting your hands. And um, I think they improve a release, in my opinion. Uh, I really do, and especially with larger ammo, because it makes a larger ammo, uh, like if you're shooting 9.5 or 11 mil steel, it actually makes it feel smaller than it, than it or it makes it feel its actual size. Like when you're shooting... Um, when you're shooting uh, 11 mil steel with a one millimeter thick pouch, it's actually 13 millimeters that you're holding onto now, which is bigger than, than the ball. With pit locating pouches, you may be shooting um, 11 and a half. It makes a big difference because that ball has that, that uh, in the circumference when you're actually feeling on, you can still feel the ball through there a little bit, which is kind of nice. So, when we're talking uh, larger, larger ammo, larger ammo, 100% pit locating pouches all day long. There is no substitute. They are the best, in my opinion. one for the first time yesterday Rex I do like him yep Hibbley makes some sweet sweet leather pouches oh nice it's always good to find somebody who uh, uh you always got one of these eh oh, see you later bro yeah a little bit of chin hickey going on <laughs> hey Dylan what's going on <laughs> I was surprised I found some you I found a use for the thin ugly leather I got sitting here. Yeah, but I bet you they're great, Hillbilly. I bet you they're great. What's my favorite slingshot? Ooh. Tough questions, man. This one's always a tough one. 
I don't really have one favorite. Uh, I got a couple of them that I really, really like. I have a few that I call my in, in my forever collection. Um, so I can give you a, an idea of that, of something that I really, of those that I really like. So basically we're talking the, uh, I like the um, Titan Hunter. I like the the Cygnus from uh, Prime Fork, the Beagle from Prime Fork. I like the uh, the Enlivener from Sniper Sling. Spitfire from Omega Slings, which I can't seem to put down these days. And uh, it's a little too new, but uh, my God, the Vinix. Wait till you see how I shoot this thing to, uh, tonight. It's going to blow your mind. This thing is something else. Uh, I've got a few others. The S. Robin's way up there. i got a bunch of others that I really, really like. But those are the ones that I shoot. Them. Oh, and the Companion from the Catapult Carnage also is a very good one. I prefer the way uh, Mark bands them up. I need to order some BB pouches uh, later. I love smelling farts. Good for you, LR. Uh, good for you. <gasps> My favorite non hibbly frame right now is a Skeleton. Love the thing. You know, I've been thinking about getting one of those. Uh, I, I really like those skeletonized frames, and I, I find it's cool that you can uh, you can mess with them a little bit and. Uh, and uh, you know, wrap them the way you want. You can personalize them. That I always love that kind of thing with the slingshots. But I'm hearing a lot of good things about the Skeleton. I'm gonna have to get one of those. What is the time for you? Mine is five eighteen a.m. My time is eight eighteen a.m. Yeah. So do you find you guys who own Skeletons, are they very similar to the XO from uh, from Wasp? Because to me, from, from what I've seen online and pictures of them, they seem like a cross between, um, a, uh, they seem like between, uh, between a cross, oh my God. <sighs> they seem between, uh, a cross between the XO and like a Titan Hunter almost. Is that am I am I on base with that? <laughs> who do I like, Ronaldo or Messi? Who are these guys? I have no idea who they are. Uh, I did a small video on them. I have an S92. They're totally different. Oh, wow. More like the Titan Hunter. I have subscribed. Can anybody answer this for me? What is the obsession between Ronaldo and Messi? What is the deal? I know who they are. I'm just messing with the dude. But really... Every single live, I get at least two of these guys asking me, Ronaldo or Messi, Ronaldo or Messi, what's the deal? What's the deal? It's like French's ketchup or Kraft. Who cares? Could be a Brit thing. <laughs> oh, I know they're stupid good at football. I know they're like superstars. They're probably, they're like the... Uh, I'm gonna go full Canadian on you. They're like the, um, they're like the, uh, you know, the the Mary Lemieux of uh, of hockey or something like that. You know, or the the Wayne Gretzky's of hockey. I, I get it, but man, <laughs> I subscribe, but I don't like Ronaldo or Messi. Every, everyone give give uh, four from B BFB uh, a round of applause. <laughs> Who are we talking about? Well, we're just talking. I, I, I'm just constantly getting these uh, getting these uh, questions. I'm constantly getting these questions about who's uh, 
you know, Ronaldo or Messi on, on, <laughs> over soccer or football, whatever, wherever you're from. But it's like, come on, give me a break, man. Oh, I wouldn't go that far, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty clear. Chucking is the goat, my friend. I want one of the slingshots, just I'm not allowed to buy stuff through my phone. David, hey, hi from Montreal. What's going on, buddy? Aussie or Labs? Ooh, I got an Aussie doodle. I like Ronaldo. He shoots a long draw. All right, I'm in. Ronaldo, that's my answer from now on. I want to do a video between the Skeleton and Chris's companion. Ooh, that's tough, man. I love that companion. Where are you? I'm uh, off island, but I work on the island. That's that's all I'll give you, Dave. Sorry, buddy. Hi from Serbia. Yep, Quebec. <clears throat> Mohammed, how you doing, my friend? I did a short uh, go for it, Rex. I did a short comparison of the S ninety. Uh, I'm going to do a more detailed one later on. Hey, Hillbilly, here's a question for you. I've got the, um, I'm 48, I've got the uh, S90 and the medium Titan Hunter. Have you ever tried the, uh, have you ever tried the, um, what do you call it? The medium Titan Hunter? Because I find the S90 and the medium Titan Hunter shoot very different. They're, they're both great frames in their own right, but they shoot very different. Yeah, we just got a mini Aussie doodle in October. So fun, smart, and easy to train. You know what? Uh, my Benny, he's, uh, he's a year old, April 1st. And yeah, the joke's on me. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a really smart dog, very smart. But wow, is he defiant. But I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, <laughs> I'm hoping once, um, once we get his, uh, get him fixed, uh, everything will be good. My vet wanted us to wait until he was a year old. Apparently, uh, a lot of male dogs get uh, hip and bone problems if you get them get them fixed uh, too early. So we're gonna we're gonna take care of that business a little bit later, and um, hopefully, he'll be a little less uh, challenging. But when I when I have food and I'm doing some training with him, I'm I'm telling you that dog could do calculus, but. Yeah. But he's a lot of fun. I'm not the type of guy who likes a robot dog either. I much prefer the dog, a dog that's got, uh, got some character. Unfortunately, character tends to come with uh, character tends to come with uh, a little bit of attitude from time to time, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Osama bin Queefing, you've got the funniest name I've ever heard, but you're a douche, so see you later. <laughs> Osama bin Queefing. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I almost want to bring that guy back. <laughs> yeah. Never heard that about getting fixed too early. I mean, it could be, it could be BS. I, I don't know. 
uh, but it's uh, something that my vet said that's important to, um, to to do. So we waited for a year, and we'll see. Now the year is done. Uh, it's it, it's on the uh, it's on the the next to do list, pretty much. Sarah Brooks, hi, uh, hi, Tio Mark. I just joined. What did you just join? You joined the VIPs, or you just uh, joined the live, or you're... what did you just join? But thank you, either way. <laughs> what the heck is an Aussie doodle? It's an Aussie uh, Australian Shepherd uh, mixed with a poodle. And uh, the the amazing thing is, like, if you're looking for an athletic dog, holy cow, it's just insane. They're really, really athletic and really, really smart. Like this, we're, we're messing around with them a little bit, take them to the dog park or running around in the backyard. And uh, he does some uh, great things. It's, it's incredible. He can jump super high. He runs super fast. He's very, very agile. It's, it's really insane. Just join the live. Okay, well, thanks for joining the live, Sarah Brooks. Appreciate you. George Brooks, hi, hello. How's it going, George Brooks? How old are you? I'm 48 years old. I know I look way older with all this shit in my face, but yep, not that old. Uh. Brother, the hair is on a string. Just let it go, dog. <laughs> it's not that deep. Yeah. Can I get a shout out? Sure, Toxic Tom. There you go, buddy. Can I get a like from you, though? I'd appreciate it. Don't forget 50% asshole. Oh, man. It's, <laughs> it's true. It's true. He's uh, He, he can be really funny. He can be super sweet, but man, sometimes it's like you little, you know? Anyway. Yep, I'm still young. Like them, I sub. Thank you, Toxic Tom. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. So once the uh, the uh, the video goes live uh, this afternoon for the winner of the giveaway, um, the next one I'll probably be doing will be at ten thousand, and that one's going to be a huge one. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how long it takes to get there, but I'm. I'm, uh, I'm feeling it won't be too long. Uh, the channel's growing pretty crazy. In the last two weeks, I've already picked up 300 subs, so it's uh, it's going pretty good. Am I in the U.S.? No, I'm in Canada. Sure. If you can uh, give, me a, uh, give me a like, I will give you a shout-out. Let me know when you got it done. Is that bird feed on the desk behind me? This here? No, this is a uh, clay slingshot ammo. <laughs> no bird feed. <laughs> How do you get in on the giveaway? Oh, this one's passed, buddy. I've uh, I've already uh, I've already picked the the winner. Um, but I do do random um, random giveaways uh, from time to time, uh, and. That's it. So for people who watch my videos from time to time, I'll just be like, hey, there's a giveaway. I'm going to pick somebody from the comments uh, on my last video. And I that's how I do it because uh, I started getting too many spammers. And actually, there was one guy uh, that that um, joined this last giveaway. And it's the second time he's done this. And he ended up uh, joining in the giveaway like eight times. Kept on putting his name in. Same thing, same thing. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And I'm just like, you know what, dude? Now you're completely out. You're not going to have a chance to win. Screw you. But I keep on getting too many of those. And if I'm giving away something, I don't want it to be more work than it's worth. Uh, so this one, I didn't even put any tags or anything on it. I just uh, let everybody know. So the people who are subscribed and are awesome and follow my videos and comment and join me on these lives, that uh, one of them will actually win it. And uh, 
That's why I do that. I'm a good guy. Tell me about Pitbull. I don't have a Pitbull. Sure, Oscar Delane. Shout out to you, my friend. Android, Android food. Done. Emmy stuff. Emma stuff. Shout out to Emma. What's my favorite food? <laughs> Ribeye steak all day long, every day. Did I get any Walmart clay? Nope. They uh, in Canada they don't. It's not available. And uh, with all the crap that went on this week, uh, I wasn't able to see if I can get it shipped in from the United States yet. But uh, I may give it a try next week. Where can I be a wrench? Uh, okay, I'll make you a wrench, but here are the rules. Any silly stuff? Not a problem. I'm okay with that. We get any uh, stupid hate stuff where people are dropping uh, any gay bashing or gay stuff, uh, any kind of uh, hate to, to any people, uh, that's going to be fine. Anything like... Um, Anyway, I think you get. I think you get my point. I will uh, dress you up in blue. There we go. Done deal, Caddy Plinker. Don't go too crazy. Give it. Give a warning. Give a chance, and then call it done if they keep. If they continue. Well, I could call it Blur Feed Mark. I guess I could, eh? <laughs> I'm kind of new. What's my channel about? Well, uh, Hiko Pearson. Pearson. Basically, what we do is uh, we're all uh, slingshot shooters here, or most of us anyway, chatting, having a good time. And uh, that's what we do. We do some uh, slingshot shooting. A lot of us are into, uh, into camping, uh, hiking, outdoor stuff, hunting. And... Um, Outdoor stuff, pretty much, fishing. We do a chat about all that stuff, but mostly it's a slingshot heavy. And um, But here we're on the lives, we talk about whatever pops up. Any, you know, all things are pretty much open, uh, unless things get a little bit ridiculous. Emma stuff. I did uh, give you a shout out before, but I'll do it again. Shout out to Emma stuff. I don't have a pit bull, buddy. It's a Australian Shepherd and uh, an Aussie Doodle. It's an Australian Shepherd and Poodle mix. The pit bulls are beautiful, great dogs. My brother, my brother used to have a uh, a pit bull boxer mix, and now he has a, uh, a pit bull. Um, the hell is that dog called? Lady in the Trap Dog. Somebody help me up. It's a mix between those two. Gorgeous little pup. Mark, did I get any Walmart clay yet? Nope. Did I give you love? Hello? Popcat, hey -oh. What's going on, buddy? This up deep bush got from uh, Let me see other links and I'll grab a slingshot. Deep bush got from Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you talking to Tom. Do you have any ideas about people? Yeah, I think uh, I think they're good dogs, man. I think all dogs are good. It's just how they get trained. I think some dogs don't really belong in some people's hands. I uh, I know somebody who has a Malinois that probably shouldn't have one. Uh, they're absolute meat missiles, and uh, it's probably just a disaster waiting to happen, but it is what it is. I'm new to my channel, so what do I do? What do I do on my channel, or what do I do in life? 
Hi, I'm from Turkmenistan. How you doing, buddy? Gerben? Can I see a slingshot, please? Sure, I'll show you my newest slingshot. This is the Vinix from a guy in Indonesia named Harley Davison. He does absolutely amazing work. It was all made out of wood, this one. He did a great, great job. Yeah, T-Rex slings, no political. We're sticking away from that crap. Mark, I have watched you for over a year. My goodness, Lone Caddy. Lone Wolf Caddy, you must be a sucker for punishment, bro. <laughs> Watch me for a whole year. Oof, look at this ugly mug. There's only so much uh, one person can take, my friend. Nope, not yet, Toxic Tom. We still got a little bit of a relationship to work on before we uh, before we get to that. <clears throat> Andy Low Plinks. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Just turn to OnlyFans real quick. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Do I have a Discord? I don't even know what that is, dude. Raggedy Love? No idea. Can I see your slingshot? I just showed you my slingshot. I'll show you another one, though. This one here is another one of my favorites. This I bought from Omega Slings as well. As you can see, the, uh, the symbol there. But it's made by Coyote Customs by a dude named Tim Henry who, as a maker, has really come into his own. He's making some beautiful slingshots. This one holds real well and shoots real well. Uh, it's an absolute monster of a slingshot. Love it. <clears throat> wow. I'm really far behind. Double Ds. What's going on, buddy? Hey, sit down, long. Sit down Slinger. How you doing, buddy? I like camping with my dad is scared of bears. Do you know a way to keep keep away bear? Yeah, absolutely, buddy. Ronald, <clears throat> when you're out camping, if you want to keep bears away from your camp, this is what you do. All of your food, deodorant, toothpaste, and fuels at nighttime need to get hung away up in a tree and away from your camp. And I'm not talking about 10 feet away. I'm talking 100 feet away or more. Hang it up, put it up into a tree, and tie it off so it's about 15 feet off the ground at least, and 10 to 15 feet for sure. And from the, from the branch that you're hanging it from, you want it to be at least four or five feet away from that. So if you find, if you find a tree that's 20 feet high or find a branch that's 20 feet high, you throw it over there and you hang it around four or five feet below the branch, and about 10 feet or 15 feet above the ground. That's your best bet. But fuels, deodorant, all of those things, anything that you're planning on bringing with you into the woods that has a smell, keep it away from your camp. Don't cook in your camp. Don't have chewing gum. Don't have candy. Don't have anything like that. Keep it out of your camp and bring yourself a bottle of bear spray just in case. But for the most part, they won't bother you. <clears throat> Do I still shoot traditional archery and what kind of bow do I shoot? Well, here's the problem. I have a Samick Sage takedown recurve bow. It's 40 pound. Um, I still have it set up to shoot. Uh, I rejoined my archery club uh, not too long ago. Uh, but the, the basically what happens is when you join the archery club, the indoor uh, club is at a church in the basement. There's so many freaking people that go to this thing. It's just like, I got people bumping into me and, and just, you know, and also with, uh, with, um, with things going on with my son's wrestling during the week, uh, the clubs open Mondays and Fridays. I can't really go on Mondays and Fridays because that's when, when I got to drop them off for, for, uh, for wrestling. Anyway, it becomes, becomes uh, difficult. So on Mondays, I'm usually in bed by eight o'clock because I get up at four o'clock in the morning. On the outdoor course, the outdoor course, they give you a key. So this year, I was trying to get ready for, for uh, hunting season. But 
some guy got onto the got onto the the grounds and shot all the targets with a with a, with a gun. They just showed up and just shot everything up. And <clears throat> it's a private property that we're on that backs onto another person's property. And this guy has been going around shooting everything. Well, we think it's him. We don't know for sure. So basically the cops were called. They came in to go check it out, to see what was going on. So basically I lost my whole season last year because you can't really just go around shooting bows anywhere you want uh, here anyway. It uh, becomes, a, becomes an issue. But So that was that. Uh, so anyway. But uh, do I still shoot my, my Samic Sage? Yes, but I much prefer my... Um, my my compound my compound is much much better. It's a seventy pound my compound, but the lead off him. I think I'm holding only fifteen pounds or something like that. It's, it's nice. Thanks, Oscar. This morning, oh, we're doing good. Wow. Do I play any video games? Not really. But back when I did, I was really into things like uh, Diablo, Baldur's Gate, um, uh, Final Fantasy. Those are kind of my, my games, but I don't play games anymore. Been here an hour. It's five thirty-six, and I haven't had any coffee yet. These hillbilly. What are you doing, dude? Get yourself a coffee, man. Hundred hundred percent. There, sit down, slingers, not the dogs. The only. Hey, from Chicago. How you doing, Limo? Mathos. Wow. Fortnite Pro 645. Hi, I love your videos. Hey, thanks for watching, Fortnite. Appreciate you, buddy. Hi, Fortnite Pro 645. No political, I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, Double D's came for the action. <laughs> Let's go watch your last video. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Donnie didn't say no beards. No, beards are welcome. All the beards. Bring all the beards. Do I have a Jordan Smothers frame? Yes, I do. I have um, the Yeti. I have two Yetis. I've got a clipped one, one of his prototypes, and I have a black one. That he sent me later on. And, oh, no, I lied. I have three of them. I have three Yetis. And uh, I also have the, the Ruguru and Windigo that were both made by him from uh, way back in the day. Discord is a chat app. Oh. oh, dude, double Ds. First of all, hold on. All the people with the wrenches, great job. Take care of business because it's out of hand here. Do I, do I do any tricks with a slingshot? Yes, I do. I used to have a, um, I used to have a, I still do, a playlist called uh, Fun Shot Fridays, Slow Mo Sundays, and Ten Shot Tuesdays. It's all together. And uh, in those videos, I've done some card cuts, um, shooting different size uh, targets, uh, super, super long shots. Um, well, not super, super long, but pretty long. 30 meters. Pretty long. Can I see your slingshot? Yeah, I'll show you a slingshot. This is the Vinix. It's my newest slingshot. Shoots like a dream. And it's absolutely beautiful craftsmanship. This is made by Harley Davidson Slings. Davidson. Davison. I always mess that up.
trying to clean your garage. Yeah, I got to do that too. I'm just thinking it might be easier to burn down my house and collect the insurance. Don't cook where you need yeah, Don't cook where you sleep. That's a big one. Wow, how far behind am I? Wow. Okay. How old am I? I'm uh, 48. Looking forward to seeing the giveaway. Have a great day. You too, Doug. Take it easy, buddy. Roman, hello. Very far behind. Yeah. I, I didn't realize everyone was chatting so much. Holy smokes. I got way far behind there. I'm all, I'm all caught up now. Well, I skipped some people back there. Hope there wasn't something too important that I missed. But uh, Oh, Chad's in. Chad's here. What's going on, Chad? Missed you there, buddy. I was trying to catch up. Uh, Chad's at work, can't stick around. Okay, I get it. The rich guy. Hi, oh, princess. Wow, we're just, uh, it's been a very interesting day. Hey, from Australia. Why are people calling me old? I'm a legend. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> Appreciate you. <clears throat> I think they see the gray and right away they think I'm super old and the fact that my hair fell out, but I think this is all this is all dealing with trolls. Hi from New Zealand. What's going on, bro? People are silly sometimes. Yeah, well, it comes with the territory. If this kind of uh, if this kind of trash is gonna hurt your feelings and you're in the wrong you're in the wrong game. So they can talk all they want. I just ditch them, call them done. And talk to the people that are interested in chatting. Pretty Chaudre, please take my name, please. There, I said your name. What country am I in? I'm, a, I'm in Canada, my friend. I take some good and the bad. Yeah, but there's a lot of good in this community. All these other people that just pop in, they're not usually uh, the community folks, you know? This is a workout this morning with these trolls. My thrum is going to be strong. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I'm your best fan. Well, I appreciate you. The Twominator? Uh, I guess that's it. Yeah. Pretty. Nice. What time is it over there? Uh, we're uh, 10 to 9. What are we talking about right now? We're actually talking about all the trolls that popped up into my feed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're usually talking about uh, outdoor stuff, slingshots, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we're all shooters here. Hey, Samarine, how are you? Any snow over there or, you, or did it all melt already? You know, uh, Brother K, first of all, how you doing, my friend? Second of all, uh, we had almost no snow this year. It was very, very little. Uh, we're going to have definite water problems this year, for sure. But um, we had almost no snow. Then we had 20 centimeters fall on, uh, what day was it? Uh, Wednesday night. 20 centimeters that fell Wednesday night. I think it's almost all gone already. We've had very, very little, very little snow this year. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be rough. The water level right now is what it's at usually in July. Imagine that. It's going to be, it's going to be bad. I'll tell you, Mark D. The community here with a lot of the people that are on, uh, that are on here, it, it's great. There's people from all over the world. That uh, join on on these things. We got, uh, I think, just today we got United States, UK, New Zealand. I think maybe Australia. I'm pretty sure I saw some people from Australia, um, from India, all over the place that join in on these lives, and we all chat about the thing that we love. 
and everybody is usually very kind, very smart, very sweet. It's just great. It's great. You, you can't go wrong. The slingshot community has got to be one of the best out there. Give a wrench to the regulars and still control this mayhem. I know this is this is getting crazy. I live in Japan. So Preeti uh, Chaudhary lives in Japan, and I'm in Canada. Can you give us a tour of all the things in the in the background that I'll sub? Well, here's my disaster. It's all uh, slingshot stuff, targets. That's pretty much what we got going on here. I've got uh, uh, most of my targets are in my garage, but I got my, my ping pong balls, my string, ammo, some elastic templates. We got some clay ammo here. Nice little pocket knife. This is a uh, Gonzo Firebird. We've got uh, First Ridge. This was a Nice frame. I can't remember the guy's name now who made this for me. Hopefully it'll pop into my head, but he's a bow maker and he was using all these little leftover trims to make these, uh, to make these, uh, slingshots. And it's a uh, quite, quite a nice, uh, quite a nice little slingshot. We've got, uh, some wiffle ball targets. You'll see me shooting one of these later on today. Bantine template. Some of my absolute favorite elastics and Omega slings. And uh, what else we got going on? Some cutting stuff. We got a double D sticker and slingshot Tony. Two legends. Two legends in the sport. So that's about all of my mess I'm going to show you. The vertical format. Yeah. Sling them wrenches, boys. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think probably my next... Uh, the next Sunday morning live that we do, the Coffee with ATO, uh, I think we're going to turn this back up the wide way and hopefully we can ditch a lot of this mess because uh, I find it's taken away from the experience a little bit. I know it does bring a lot more views to the channel and some people stick around and some people don't, but I mean, look at this. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, six messages in a row, all trolls, and we still got 50 people in here. So as fast as we're getting rid of them, they're popping right back in there. Later, fellas. Got to get the day started. T-Rex, I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for stopping in, man. See a raptor. Later, T-Rex slings. I like the stream, too. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you, Roman. I'm a doctor. All right. I'll probably I'll probably need one pretty soon if these trolls don't uh, take off. <laughs> Kevin, how you doing, buddy? Hi, ATO. Oh, I'm awake. I'm awake, kinda. <laughs> I know I know these are a little early, but I try to do this so I can get them so I can get a little bit of everybody from all over the world in here. That's why I get up so early to do this. What is my passion? Do I craft things? Sometimes I do, man. I have uh a couple of slingshots. I don't know where I've put them right now. I can't show them right now, but um, I've uh, I'm, I'm kind of big into um, into carving spoons and uh, cooks and slingshots and that kind of thing. So I like to mess around with wood from time to time. But if uh, oh, so what is my passion? My passion is uh, slingshot shooting and wild camping. That's my two favorite things in the world to do. Uh, and fishing is probably right up there too. Actually, fishing, fishing while camping, I don't know. They're they're neck and neck. I don't know which one would be my favorite. I was a troll yesterday. I was shooting under a bridge. <laughs> oh, shades. That was awesome. Not that only Rex. Uh, we had a lot of snow for two weeks ago and all gone. Last Monday, we had 20 centimeters. Next, uh, we should be something like 10 degrees. And my holidays are over. Oh, no. So it's back to work for you, Brother K. Got a couple of Firebirds. Nice bang for the buck. I'll have to check those out. This is a Slingshot channel, new people. Cheers for the tour. Nice to learn a little bit about it. 
Yeah, Mark D, if you're ever interested in really getting into the sport or anything like that and you have any questions, you can always hit me up. I'll be happy to help you out, man. I've got a lot of good videos out there that can uh, get you get you shooting straight in no time. Again, two or three weeks and not shooting anything with a slingshot. Oh no, you must be uh, you must be going crazy, buddy. <laughs> Gotta go myself. Everyone, take care and have a good one. Hey, take care, Robert. Thanks again for all the support you've uh, you shown the channel, buddy, and I appreciate you, bud. Next time you're over here, buddy, I'm gonna have to make you a wrench. Take care, Mark D. <laughs> Hi, Kilavala. Some of my favorite slingshot purchases are your fault. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we're all guilty of that, dude. Take care, Roman. What qualifies as a troll? People might be different opinions, or they might want some rough uh, questions answered. Here's the thing. What qualifies as a troll? People might have different opinions. I don't care if people have different opinions. Um, this is my live, and I've got a few rules that people got to stick by. Is basically, I don't want people blasting my channel with political crap. I don't want any hate speech in any way. So no uh, anti-gay, no this, that, all that stuff. I've had a bunch of people come in and call me gay, 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 gay all the way down, and I'm not having any of that crap. Or calling other people in the chat gay. Not interested in that either. If you can't come in here and just be part of the call of the conversation, chat, be friendly about it, then leave. Don't come and trash my trash my thing. And some people just come in here and do that. So uh, rough questions answered, ask, ask your questions. Not a problem. But if they're going to be disrespectful to anybody else, then that's that. And the funny thing is, is this is my life, so I get to choose who stays and who goes. Got to go means sorry, got to go. I know. I understood. That's why I said you take care, Roman. Hello, mate, all the way from Ireland. Later. What do I use in slingshot, metal or rock? Uh, I usually use 8 millimeter steel. I occasionally shoot 9 millimeter steel balls, or I shoot clays. I never use rocks. Camping and fishing go hand in hand. Absolutely. I'm late because you roll on left handed than the dog, Maddie. I was in the car. <laughs> Advice you would give your younger self. Mmm, buddy. Alberto, I'll explain something to you. When I was a kid, I was doing things like camping, fishing, that kind of thing. It was my favorite thing in the world. I used to wake up in the morning, go pick up my friend John a couple streets down. So I'd walk about a kilometer to his house. Then we'd walk three or four kilometers to the water. We'd fish all day, working, walking up and down the thing. We'd have a great time laughing, joking, talking all about all that stuff and having a great time. My buddy John moved away. I ended up... Uh, hanging out with a bunch of other guys and um, basically uh, there's a lot of things I wouldn't change and there's a lot of things I would change, but usually the things that you grow up loving to do are the things you're going to grow up. You're going to spend the rest of your life loving to do. It sounds kind of weird, but I stopped fishing and hiking and camping for years uh, because many of my friends that I hang around, I started hanging around with didn't do it. They had other things that I like to do. And I started doing some of those things that I did with them. And I enjoyed myself. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Moving forward from there, uh, regardless of who I'm talking to, hanging out with, all that stuff, I'll be true to me before I'll be true to anybody else. And that's never, ever going to change. And that's what I would have told my younger self 
was always do what you think is right and do the things that you love to do. And that's it. Life is very short. You never know when it's going to end. And if you're going to spend all your time doing things that people you think people expect you to do or want you to do, you're missing out on your life. Do the things that you love and enjoy every minute and every day. What I miss? Not too much. We're just chatting, buddy. We're just chat chatting, Mr. Leon. And that's the bottom line, because ATO said so. What's this channel about? We do a lot of slingshot shooting. Uh, we're all slingshot shooters. A lot of these guys shot in uh, shot in um, in tournaments and all that stuff. Uh, a lot of the guys here have uh, YouTube channels. And by the way, uh, anybody who's got a YouTube channel that wants to share their uh, share the link down in the description here in the chat, go right ahead and do that. But uh, that's pretty much it. Drop them like a toilet seat. Slingshot keepers. Holy crap. I can use my wrench. It's a miracle. Go for a double D's. Smash some people, buddy. Shooting clay sounds fun. Uh, does it explode on target? Yeah, it does, dude. Uh, I've got a I've got a recent couple of recent videos. Actually, I got a video just uh, done just recently of my favorite targets. If you fast forward a little bit to the end, uh, I've got this thing called the Texas Star and um and a battle a battle stand target. Uh, it's got this little flip flop thing in the back with these little metal targets, and when you hit them, you can see the, the clays explode when you give them a good whack. It's a lot of fun. Hey, Ethan, congratulations, buddy. Ethan coming in third place at the tournament. Hey, at ACC. What's up, buddy? Everyone give uh, Mr. Ethan slinging, Tennessee slanging a round of applause. You can get reception up there in YouTube, Ethan. What football team do I support? Uh, what kind of football are we talking? American football or uh, or soccer football? Sasu. Interesting fact: in Nepal, where I'm from, slingshots are called guleli. Guleli. My, grand, my grandpa was a great bird hunter with it. You know, he tells me hunt his hunting story sometimes. Oh, that's so cool, dude. That must be freaking awesome having a, you know, listen to these stories. What happened? I just got here. Oh, we're just chatting, dude. That's all. Also, those times they used wooden handle with a thick rubber or uh, for the sling. Pebbles are for the projectiles, and people were very accurate with that. Hunting birds and cook them and eat them. Oh, man. That sounds so much fun. That's a great uh, – thanks for sharing that with us, Sasu. I appreciate you, man. Well, whatever happens, bro. Uh, happened, bro. You said perfectly. <laughs> oh, uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, I'm basically uh, – uh, one guy asked me, well, what if I have, um, uh, what, what concept, what, what, uh, what will remove somebody for, as a wrench? I basically told them that, uh, it doesn't matter if they have a different opinion or not. This is my life and, uh, my rules are, 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 are it and that's it. And then somebody else asked me if, uh, what would I tell my younger self? And, uh, I basically just uh, said what I would tell my younger self. You just got lucky, my ass, Ethan. Come on, buddy. Climb up on that roof and scream it from up there, buddy. You did a great job. My luck, all your trolls will come to my channel. <laughs> Give me a wrench, bro. I got your back. Good luck. I got to go, brother. All right. Take it easy, man.
No, it's a, it's a lot of fun, man. It's a lot of fun. Actually, um, some of the guys on, on here do lives, uh, a co-live. So what you're seeing here is basically you'll have me and another shooter. I've done one with T-Rex and I've done one with Rob Cross so far. But we basically do some shooting and you can see us shooting and then we, we talk back and forth and have a, have a lot of fun. So it's a, it's a good time. Sling, Ohio. What's going on, buddy? Min camp. Hope you have a great day. Uh, Oleg, Oleg 12. Hope I got that right. You have a great day, too. Uh, I'll disappear in a moment and reappear like magic. Uh, I could get a call in the car <laughs> with the dog. No, no worries. Uh, no worries, buddy. <clears throat> 1980s or 2024? 1980s, 100%. What are we talking about? The slingshots. Slingshots, uh, camping, outdoory stuff. Uh, basically, whatever happens to pop up. Love the cool lives. Me too. And I'm hoping to do a couple more. Zill brush. Ohio. Nice whoop. Awesome work, brother. I'm watching you from the Middle East. From Syria. Holy smokes. How you doing, my friend? Are you uh, a slingshot shooter as well? I'm getting out. Where are you getting out to, Lone Slinger? I shot the Nova, Spitfire, and Saker. Which one of those uh, three uh, shot best for you, bud? Andy Lowe, let's uh, let's talk business, buddy. I'll hit you up, or later on, hit you up with a. Uh, well, we'll chat about it. We'll see if we can get on live. I don't know when I'll be able to do it. Wednesdays are usually free for me. And, oh, actually, now that wrestling season's over, Monday to Friday, should be pretty good. <laughs> should be pretty good. But we'll put it together. Uh, send me a DM. Send me a DM at some point. We'll, we'll talk back and forth, and we'll figure out uh, we'll figure out when when we can both be available, and uh, we'll see if we can get a live going. I've got a bunch of recycling I need to do. I've got a whole bunch of cans ready to go. So let me know. John Atkins, how you doing, my friend? Yep, you too. Sit down, Slinger. I want to get all of you guys on here, man. You guys are all freaking awesome. Wednesday is the soonest I can do. Well, maybe we'll mark it in uh, for Wednesday. And I'm, I don't know where you're at, what you're, what uh, what time you're on, but uh, I'm on the I'm on the East Coast, so Eastern Standard Time for me. But we'll 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 figure it out. It'll be fun. Shepherd slings in Syria has seen on the news. I gotta try one of those things, man. Those things look freaking awesome. I'd say they all did good. The Saker 80 millimeter I use for the speeds on the saw blades and 12 shots off in 30 seconds, and I missed two shots. Oh, wow. Skyler David, thanks for the sub. Appreciate you. My mom says my, well, if your mom says it, it's got to be true. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so that'll work out good. Usually, uh, Andy, on uh, I get home usually around 3.30, 4 o'clock from work. So I would need like 20 minutes to uh, scratch my dog's ass and uh, tell him hi and, you know, let him outside and all that stuff. And then uh, I can pretty much get ready to go. So let me know when, you're, when, uh, when it works out. We'll work it out uh, on the DM. It'll be easier. You ever try modern style things? Are they cool? 
I personally like the wood style. Just wondering. Uh, yeah, I've got some modern style ones. I've got some wood ones and all that stuff. Uh, I actually prefer the wooden handle ones in winter because they seem to be a little bit warmer when you're holding on to them. Um, but uh, like here, take a look at this. It's a nice looking slingshot. This is the S Lizard from Sniper Sling. That's a really cool looking slingshot. I've got uh, this guy here. This is the Axiom X. Completely adjustable. You can actually make this thing fit your hand perfect if you want. I've got a nice little wrap on there. Uh, what else do I got? I got my Vector or my Vortex over there. That would have been a cool one to show you. But this is another one I recently did a video on. It's got kind of uh, newer materials on there. But I've got some really wacky shaped ones. Uh, that would they would probably be cool to show you, but it's in another room. I got this one here. This is my S Robin. But there's lots of different uh, lots of different styles. Oh, this guy here is the uh, I believe it's the M31 Wasp from Delta Nine Slingshots. It's pretty cool for this one because it's got a magnet in the bottom. So you can actually attach your attach your ammo directly to the bottom of your slingshot. There's lots of uh, lots of cool slings out there that you can uh, get your hands on. Hey, thanks a lot for stopping in there, uh, sit down slinger. I appreciate you, buddy. Hi, and I like. Hey, thanks, thanks, uh, Skyler David. Have I tried using a scope on a sling? Uh, I've tried using a sight on a sling, but I don't like them. I much prefer to shoot right off the right off the fork. Wait, George. Is George out of here? George is out of here. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many cool, uh, different, interesting shapes that are out there. They just, they just keep coming. Like even this guy. When I first shot it, or when I first saw it, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know how it's gonna be. It seems like the forks are really, really short. I don't know if I can get on with that, but uh, this is one of my best shooters. I kill it with this thing. It's called the Spitfire, designed by Chuck and Steel, and he's. Uh, He's been shooting, uh, he sells that on a, on a website called omegaslings.usa, or omegaslingsusa.com. Yeah, Bushcraft uh, rebooted the, um, I did a test for, uh, I think his name is Preston, um, on Delta 9 Slingshots. He, uh, he sent me that for a review, and I did some shooting with it, and I was kind of blown away. At first, it was kind of weird. I have to say this frame, when you first put it in your hand, it holds well, it locks in the place, but it, it almost, I'm going to say it almost feels uncomfortable at first, but as soon as you put a load on it, you, you get it. Like it, it just locks right into place and it's really nice. And how he did his, um, his sights on here, you can actually adjust them to where your reference point is going to be. So I'm at, I have a feeling that usually when I'm shooting long draw, I shoot right off the off the edge here um, on most of my frames, but a long draw for whatever reason, I usually shoot just a little bit inside because I tend to hook to the left a little. And with this guy, I can move it over. So I'm, I've got to I've got to test this guy out on long draw and see how it goes. But yeah, Ronaldo, which one do you like better? Oh, here we go. <laughs> that one had to be just for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man I think the more frames should have uh, whoop. I think more frames should have a holder for the clamp tool I'm forever losing allen keys yeah and this this one has it see that it's got a little screwdriver on one side and the allen key on the other so you you've always have uh, you always have your tools on on uh, with you while you're out shooting it's really nice. 
It's got a good weight to it, too. It feels like you got something in your hand. I just got my clip Spitfire. It's awesome. As the WMT versions. Yeah. I, I really like the Spitfire, man. It's one of my favorite slingshots I've, that I've ever owned. Ethan, you know what's funny? Oh, Ronald, which one do you like better? I read it wrong. <laughs> I thought for sure, I thought for sure you're here. I was getting trolled by 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 Ethan. <laughs> was that the Delta 9? Yeah, yeah, it was. It's the uh M31 M31 Wasp. Yes, sir, Joshy. We're all talking about slingshots. Yep. Bunch of grown ass men talking about kids' toys. And it's a it's a great time. Could I name an uh, an NBA player? Sure, I could, but you're gone, so I won't. Uh, they should be back in business soon. Yeah, I heard. I heard that uh, Preston is buying a, a new mill or a laser machine or something. Is that is that, uh, is that correct? Was I correct in that? Can we please pray for me? I've got cancer. You got my prayers. I'm a kid, though, so it doesn't matter if you're a kid or a grown man. It's something, it's a hobby, it's fun, it's good community, you'll have a great time. Get yourself a slingshot and get shooting. You'll have a, you'll have a great time. I have the Nomad from Delta 9. The corners are toned down on that one, but uh, 88 millimeter. He's got the last one before he ramps up the production again. Oh, wow. What do you mean by the corners are ramped up? Are they um, are not as, uh, what do you write here? Make sure I get the get this right. Or toned down. Okay, so do you mean that they're not they're not as uh, like rounded off, or they're not as pointy? Like what 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 do you mean by that? Because if I had to nitpick, I think that's probably the only thing I'm not crazy about on that. Uh, is that it's uh, the corners are a bit rounded. I prefer a sharp corner. Yes, sir. He did a great job on those clips. Yeah, he did. Hey, I've had my teeth out, so I'm not going to school. Just because your teeth are out? How come you how come you pulled your teeth out? What's going on? I'm still thinking about those cool clay exploding targets. Yeah, I actually had um, another video not too long ago. I had some of these guys here. These, these clay targets, and uh, I did some shooting on them. I was sticking them on top of my pheasant head. I've got this uh, this target that one of these guys sits on, and I put a little bit of putty on the top, and I attach the clays, and you can shoot it, and you see it blow up, and I put it in slow motion, so you see it kind of popping. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Oh, okay. So the bottom edge is where your thumb and pointer goes. Are the uh, tips are the same? Yeah. This this guy here, it's it's pretty cool. I think it might be a little bit more comfortable if it was maybe just slightly slightly uh, lower on that side. But just holding it feels a little bit weird in the beginning. But once you add weight to it, like I was saying before, it does something. And it just locks into the hand and it feels so damn good. I like uh, slim shots. My cousin shoots nests out of the trees with slim shots. Holy smokes. I got the S Robin close to, uh, to your specs the other day, 90 millimeter width. 122 height after watching the Robin video. Oh, did it arrive yet, or is it uh, still on the way? Well, I should uh, give a little spot check on the battery there. 
are we doing? Oh, got plenty of battery. Perfect. I had a bunch of cavities, so I can't go to school for a few days. Doctor says I can't go to school. Well, well enjoy your time off. Enjoy your, enjoy your time off, Charlotte. Yep, it's that. You'll like the Nomad better. Still chunky, though. Yeah, I don't mind the chunkiness of it, though. I got an M50 from Delta 9. Under me, Sling King STS is in the works. Oh, wow. So I got two, two frames coming. I've got the, um, what do you call it? The Koala is on the way. And uh, Min just uh, mentioned that he's going to be sending me his new, his new Thunderbolt uh, slingshot too. It's going to be coming and check it. I'll be checking that out also. It'll be uh, pretty fun to, to get some shots through the Thunderbolt, see how it goes. I think M50 is the Nomad, right, John? I think uh, I think he's right, actually. Mark, I love your glasses. Uh, I don't mind them, but I got I got the I got the uh, the thing bent here, and it keeps on dropping. It's not even on my head and it's bugging me. But yeah, they're nice and cheap. <laughs> yeah. Some of our cool slingshot channels. In UK, kids have started. I'm not. Not stupid, but into the kids and adults who are. Uh, whoa. Top for kids and adults who are starting out. Oh, wow. <coughs> What's fishing like in my type part of the world? What do I usually catch? Well, in winter, um, in winter I like to go ice fishing a lot. And uh, usually when I'm ice fishing in winter, I'm targeting uh, musky. So my personal best uh, musky was 52 inches long, 22 inches in girth, and probably weighed around somewhere around 40 pounds. Um, summertime fishing, I'm usually fishing for uh, panfish or bass. I like pan fishing. It's fun. Um, but I'm usually fishing for pan fish or bass. Uh, sometimes I do a little bit of pike fishing also, also, but I haven't caught in a large pike in a long time. Uh, I've been, I think all the muskie are eating them, to be honest, in my area. And it's weird because uh, in musky, muskies, they, they used to call it the one in 10,000 cast fish. It's something that you don't catch very often, but um, I catch up. I catch them ice fishing all the time. But that's usually what I go for is musky. My buddy caught one. I think I can't remember if it was, I think it was 56 inches long. Huge this year. And uh, I, I couldn't make it. I didn't go ice fishing at all yet this year. Thunderbolt. Yep. I got one of those coming too. I'm running you from Brighton, England on the south coast near London. Wow. Thanks, dude. Lara Amadi, I'm from Iran. Nice to meet you, uh, Lara. I've got a lot of, uh, I've got a lot of, uh, I get a lot of love from over in the UK, buddy. A lot of good people out there. Done lots of fishing in different parts of the world. Uh, luckily myself, but not ice fishing yet. Ice fishing's a blast. Nothing like the mighty bluegill. <laughs> you know what? John, when uh, when I go ice fishing, especially for for uh, for crappie and uh, and bluegill and perch, it is so much fun when you're playing with a fish finder. Like all you guys out there to play video games, get out of the house and go ice fishing with a sonar. It's the same damn thing. It's like a video game. You drop your line down, and you see that you see that little line coming down your sonar, and it hits the bottom, and you can bounce it a couple of times, call a fish in, and then you just slowly start to lift it and you shake it. And I use these little it's like a, it looks like a little grub with a little pintail, and I throw on a couple of maggots on there, and I just kind of bounce that thing. I keep it horizontal, and I bounce it, and I wiggle that little tail in front of their face. And as I'm starting to lift it up, you can see the fish come in, and they start to follow it, and they, they chase it up. And it's all a game on how you use your rod to get those things to come in. And, man, it's fun. It's so much fun.
And summer, yeah, and summertime, uh, Mark, I do a lot of. Uh, sometimes I wade, I wade out, or I hit, I hop on my canoe, and I go, um, I go can, uh, canoe fishing. Sometimes I just stand on shore and I just chuck it out there. Like in spring, around this time, actually, uh, probably next week, I'll start. Uh, you'll start seeing some catfishing videos. I love catfishing; it's so much fun. And around this time of year, it might be tough this year because the water's so low. But I use uh, chicken livers. I wrap it up in some spawn net and I cash, I cast it out. And as I cast it out, it sinks down to the bottom. It sits there and puts out all the blood and the nastiness and the smell gets out. And uh, we bang on some real big catfish, sometimes 12, 14, 20 pounders sometimes. It's awesome. Going ice fishing in May for the first time. Can't wait. In May? Where are you going ice fishing in May? Yeah, he he had 56 inches. He caught a dinosaur, dude. Hoi, hoi, boy. Hey, yo. What's going on? Uh, I want to invite Tennessee Slangin uh, for a slingshot fishing trip in my area. Oh, wow. That would be freaking awesome. Chuck and Steel. How you doing, buddy? Fish find me. Chuck and Steel. Getting in the car. I'll listen. <laughs> you got some you got some crazy dedication, Shades. I gotta tell you, buddy. Lost it there for a second. Any little going to Milwaukee. Oh. Going to Milwaukee, I guess, Lake Michigan. My uh, my girlfriend's twin brothers is asking me, wow, you guys still have ice out there? Until Man, we lost ice this year so early. Can't believe you still got ice out there at that time in May. What the hell is slingshot fishing? Well, buddy, listen to this. Basically... You have your slingshot, but instead of having a pouch, they end up having like a like a rope that goes across, and they use darts with a rope that attaches to a reel on your wrist. And when you when you release that, when you release that, it shoots a sling dart into the fish, and then you use your reel to fight it and reel it in. It's really, really cool. I don't know if it's illegal in our area. We can spearfish here. But I don't know if it's legal or not. That's the uh, that's the crazy thing. I'm in total disbelief what I'm hearing about fishing. I'm telling you, actually, buddy. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have it on on this channel, but on on my other channel, my Adventure Time Outdoors channel, I've got my cat fishing videos on there. I've got my 2017 musky fishing um, uh, season on there, where I caught that big monster. And I go through all the things that I caught about catching, uh, catching um, uh, all the perch that we caught, uh, the, 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 the fishing with the sonars and the jigging. And on that day, both me and my friend both caught, um, I caught a 52 inch or he caught a 50 inch or something like that. Two huge muskies. And the hole that we use in the ground is eight inches in diameter. And when that thing came out of the, out of the hole, his body squished coming out. It was crazy. And I got the whole thing on video too. You can check it out on that channel. What frame would I use if I went sling fishing? I really don't know what I would use. Uh, I'm kind of uh, a little spooked about shooting the darts. I could just see something horrible happening if it, if it ever slips out of your hand or something happens. I just, I don't know. I used to bow fish a little bit. You know, I was actually going to set up my Sam Sage for bow fishing. Uh, I've got an attachment in the front where I can add a little reel to it. And I was, I was thinking about doing that, but uh, um, I don't know. I don't know. You can spear fish here. 
it looks like you're swimming under the water, but I'm not sure if they'll allow it uh, shooting off of a canoe or a boat here. I, I don't know if they'll allow it. I really need to look into that. That might be fun. What are those round things in the glass on the jar on your desk? Round things in the glass on the jar. These things here? No, oh, no, you can't even see that. Are you talking about these things? Well, I have a jar. I don't know. I, I don't know what you're talking about. It says these on the jar. Oh. The double D's, that there is a is an old coffee pot. Um, there I'll show you here. It's an old coffee pot for, for camping. But uh, it's got a double D sticker on here with uh, Slingshot Tony, which I hear is going to be the next president of the United States. And inside here, I keep all my ammo. So I got a, I don't know, good 3,000 shots, maybe more in here. But this is one of those old coffee percolators. And uh, if you ever seen one of these things, that's what they got there. Get my D's, my D's and my slingshot Tony up there. <laughs> can you can you imagine? Can can you imagine uh, D's sling slingshot Tony and Biden Biden going toe to toe? Tony for president, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, you'd get my vote, one hundred percent. Slingshot Tony is a national treasure. I was trying to convince Mikey to start a new a new character, a new character for the uh, for the Irish guys, for the for little guys in the UK. I was in, we were we were talking uh, to call him Rick O'Shea <laughs> and make him an angry Irishman, but he, he told he told me he couldn't do the ammo. He couldn't do the uh, he couldn't do the accent. Is that bird food? Uh, second time I got asked that today. This here, no, it's not bird food. This is uh, clay ammo. I am a, a steel ammo kind of guy all day long, every day. Uh, the flare, um, yeah. The clay ammo is fun to shoot at certain targets, so you don't get any return to senders. But if I want to do my real precise shooting where I'm hitting small, small targets and smashing things up, that was, uh, that was my way to go. Yeah, Ricochet, if you just get the accent going, it would be freaking awesome. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Anyone can do an Irish accent if you spend 30 minutes with Irish people. But just trying to stay in character. I don't know if you've, you've probably never seen Slingshot Tony. But when you see Slingshot Tony, you'll kind of understand <laughs> understand where I'm coming from. Yeah. it's No, it's not 11 millimeter clay. It's supposed to be 9.5, but it ranges from 8 millimeter to 11 millimeter. Some of them are round. Some of them are square. It's uh, It's not really good stuff. You are now driving through the UK countryside. To the marshes with me and the dog. Oh, very nice. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to get try fifty five. We'll make a white. Oh man, you know what, dude? I almost ordered some of that. I came so close to getting the uh, the point five five. We'll make a white. House hunting with slingshots. Uh, well, where I'm at, uh, you can't really do it, but you can uh, legally anyway. Um, I have to leave the province, but uh, a lot of people hunt rabbits. Very easy to take with a slingshot. Squirrels are surprisingly tough. Um, birds also like uh, uh, grouse, um, those kind of things. Very easy to take with a slingshot. Um, that's pretty much it. 
So anybody who's out there, pigeons, um, like doves, all of those things are very easy, easily taken with a slingshot. Not a problem at all. But if you're really looking to put some meat on the table and you want to go uh, go do some hunting, um, definitely uh, 9.5 millimeter steel and start letting them rip uh, on uh, on rabbit, and uh, you'll fill up your freezer in no time. It's still it's still in the works. I'm hoping that we can um, that I'll be able to uh, get my permits done and see if we can get to uh, get some uh, get some hunting done this year. But uh, it's very hard finding finding accessible land that I can go and hunt on. Man, I was playing around with uh, 0.6 Omega Green on the practice range this weekend, and I was hitting the target so hard it was destroying them so bad I had to go back. 2.5. Holy smokes, man. No, um, just not in my province. Uh, you can't hunt, says uh, here, you can't hunt with a slingshot in no Canada. Uh, my, my poor American heart. Uh, heart. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you can't hunt in Quebec, in Ontario, I'm allowed. The problem is, is that most of the crown land that's accessible uh, for me to go and hunt at for example, um, here we have private land and we have what we call crown land, which is pu public land. Some of that crown land is designated as wildlife sanctuaries. Some of it is just go. The wildlife sanctuaries you can usually hunt on, but you have to get a permit for. The biggest problem is a lot of these, a lot of these private or public lands are surrounded by private land. And uh, I went... A couple, I guess it was two two seasons ago. I was gonna go do. I'd spoken to um, to uh, Wayne Martin. I just picked up the HGH, and I was going to make that my first hunting video. So I spoke to Wayne Martin and uh, Matt Redding. I asked them for some pictures that I could use in the video because I wanted to, you know, pay homage to the guys who designed the slingshot, came up with the designs, and all this stuff. I went out and found a section of land that I could use. Um, everything was going to be good. Bought the permits for another province. Now, because I'm in Quebec and I'm having to go to Ontario to uh, to hunt there, um, it cost like triple the price of what I'd normally pay here if I was going to go do bow hunting, for example. So I had to go get my tags, my small game license in Ontario. Everything was going to be good. And uh, that was going to be that. But by the time I got there to go do the, when the season started, somebody had bought the property in front of the, the place where I had access to the land. And by the time I got there, I, it was all posted, you know, so it was like a two hour drive to get there, got there and <laughs> everything was posted as private property. Now I wasn't allowed to get onto the property, rang the doorbell asking if I could you use their, just cross their property to get in there. And the guy politely told me to fuck off in exact words. And I'm like, well, and that was that. So basically I had to come back home, um, spent uh, a two hour car drive, $80 in permits and uh, to have nothing. And that was that. So now I'm trying to find another spot. Uh, it's not easy to find these spots to where I can go and, and, and hunt and do those things. And uh, that's that. So here we are. And it, and it kind of sucks. And what I called the the the, the Quebec um, Ministry of Natural Resources, and I asked them, so is it legal to hunt with a slingshot? Because it doesn't say you can't hunt with a slingshot, it, but it only says you can hunt with a bow, crossbow, or or rifle. So by the time I got down there to uh, to, to do it, she said, no, you can't hunt with a slingshot. I said, well, what's it? Well, why not? She's like, because uh, it's hard to do an ethical shot with that. I'm like, have you ever seen me shoot? Because there's people that are out there hunting bow, hunting with bows that don't like. I've I've got my my bow hunting permit. That's where I've got my my license. So, for for me, oh wow, my son's going for a job interview. What's a good beginner slingshot for hunting? Um, here, here's what I'm going to tell you, and there's going to be people that are going to agree with me or disagree with me. Um, but really, once you've figured out 
what frame width works best with your anchor point and you've become your skill level is at a point where you can you can hit good and and, and a regular thing there's some people that are going to tell you you should be able to hit a ping pong ball at 30 meters 10 out of 10 times that's all horse shit <laughs> but when you get very consistent with your shots and you're comfortable at shooting something around 30 meters and you can you can do pretty well with that then you're pretty much ready and it doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter what frame you're using all the frames are good as long as the frame fits you so in my case i tend to shoot 90 millimeter fork width the best so in, in, in that being said if i choose this slingshot this slingshot this slingshot this slingshot it doesn't really matter all of them will hunt well all of them is you could shoot accurate you've got the bands on there everything is set up ready to go you've got your you've got your um, you've got your bands tuned to the ammo you're going to be using you'll be in in good you'll be ready to go so that's pretty much my answer Cyril Besnier. Hello, I'm French. Enchanté, Cyril. Ça, ça va, mon ami? What's a good slingshot for hunting all of them? Fuck, okay, Purdue. It is really the band doing all the work, but the but the but the frame makes a difference where you where you uh where you anchor. So just to give you a, a breakdown on this so I can elaborate a little bit more if this helps. When I shoot an 85 millimeter fork width, I always shoot high. If I shoot a 90 millimeter fork width, where I put my fork tip is where I hit. If I shoot a 95 millimeter fork tip, when I shoot, I shoot low, aiming from the fork tip because of where I anchor. Hold on a second here. Yeah, there we go. So this is why I said, depending on where you anchor your anchor your your shot, it makes a point on where uh, makes it makes important depending on where you're going to put uh, what frame width you're using. So yeah, uh, it it does make a uh, it does make a difference, but um, once you've got that dialed in and you know basically uh, what frame width you like, then that's when the, the door is open to really, really precise shooting. I've never used a slingshot outside of hitting a few cans as a kid. Oh, that's how we all start, dude. And even today, shooting cans is one of my favorite things to do. So uh, I, I end up saving all my, uh, all my pop cans, or actually I'm more of like a, like a soda water guy. But I take those things out and I bust some bubbly cans. And uh, I wait till I have five or six or ten of them. And I put one of my one of my can killers inside that thing so it holds onto it real good and I just go to town and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, a good rule I heard a seven on ten on a forty millimeter fl flipper uh, at ten meters, two hundred fifty feet per second, nine point five steel, but I'm no hunter. I mean, yeah, I mean, really, really as a, as, as a hunter of uh, using any kind of tool to hunt with, the, it, it all comes down to is can you make an ethical shot or not? Whether you're using a gun, we're using a crossbow, we're using a bow, a spear, a rock, a stick, a slingshot, it doesn't really matter. As long as you know you can make an ethical shot, it's, that's it. That's, that's all it is. If you can make an ethical shot, you take the shot. If you can't make the ethical shot, well, you got to wait. And that's that was my case with the uh, Ministry of Natural Resources was, have you ever seen me shoot? I can hit 8 on 10 on a 30 millimeter flipper from 10 meters over and over and over again. And at uh, 15 meters, I'm somewhere around 60%, 50%. So what's the deal? That's a really, really tiny target. I actually, I actually challenged 
Chet told her, I said, you know what? I would like to see one of your one of your police officers at the DNR or the Ministry of Natural Resources um, do that well with, the, with their firearm. I'd love to see it. But she basically told me, nope, you can't do it. I actually thought about just going to buy the Quebec tags, um, hunting with a slingshot, and uh, playing ignorant if, if something happened or they got caught. But I, I don't want to lose any of my stuff, and I don't want to get in trouble. So if I, if I did that, I wouldn't be able to do any videos for, you, for, for all you guys anyway. So that's that. I'd much rather do it legally in this way. If anyone says, hey, where did you get that? Where did you shoot that rabbit? Whatever it is. While I was in Ontario, it's legal there to hunt with a slingshot, so piss off. And they can't be, they can't say nothing about it. Thunderbolt is a 90 millimeter. Oh, that's good news. That's why I'm getting it. If you say hello, Louis, I'll subscribe and be a fan for life. Yeah, that's what they all say, Louis. But you know what, Louis? Um, I'll say your name. Louis Hodgson. So that was three Louis. He owed me three lifetimes. How about that? Death Flare says, I'm interested. I'm going to look up some uh, slingshot frames to buy. <coughs> if you're interested and you have any questions, Death Flare, don't, don't feel shy. Uh, you can check me up on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Shoot me a direct message. And if you need any help on, uh, on tips, tricks, uh, band tuning stuff, anything like that, I'll be happy to help you out. Do any of you farm shooting hunting yourself? Uh, I did a lot of shooting when I was young, a real lot of shooting, like a lot, a lot. Uh, but uh, not in a bunch of years. I think uh, I have a video though of me shooting a shooting for the first time uh, in twenty something years with a rifle. Uh, we were shooting skeet at a stag party, <laughs> and. Uh, I told some of the guys that I had shot before uh, on a regular, you know, quite a few times and I um, uh, hadn't shot in 20, 20 something years at that point. Uh, it's kind of a long story, but we, we, uh, we took in uh, a troubled youth uh, at that time. He was a family member and his parents had passed away. And uh, um, my fire, my, basically my, my parents had chose, uh, that it wasn't really safe to keep the guns in the house with the troubled youth. And we ended up, uh, we ended up, um, getting rid of the guns and, uh, keeping the kid <laughs> pretty much is what happened and, uh, raised him as a brother. And, uh, that was that. But, uh, on Instagram, somewhere in that feed way down, I've got a video of me shooting, uh, skeet with a shotgun and, uh, I went 24 for 24, tore it up. It was so much fun. It had been a long time since I shot, but when, as, a, as a kid, I did a lot of shoot, and I was pretty damn good. It was actually funny. We, had, uh, we were at um, a place in Joliet in Quebec, and uh, this guy showed up with, uh, we were shooting those metal, those big metal chickens, and we were at something like 25 yards, 25 yards away, and this guy, I think I was 10 at the time, and the guy was shooting uh, this guy was standing there. He had this uh, this uh, revolver with a scope on it and everything. Like he bought all the all the fancy shit that he can put on that thing, and he was shooting at it. And I think he I think he hit like three out of the six. He had three out of the six on there. And uh, anyway, uh, my dad's rule of thumb: he gave me a snub a snubby a thirty eight uh, a thirty eight snubby to shoot. And his rule was: whenever you shoot revolvers, you only put five, never put six. So I put the five in, I went five for five with iron sights on. And basically on the snubby he had, it was like a little pin at the front and a little groove at the back. If you guys have ever seen these. And, uh, I went five for five with that reloaded and finished off the sixth one and then hit a few other <laughs> four other shots at 50 meters with that thing. And the guy was just looking at me like, what the fuck? He couldn't believe it. And he was missing all over the place with his scope and his fancy six inch barrel. And his, you no, know, it was just a total joke, but we We'd shoot, we'd shoot a lot back when I was young, a whole lot. Yeah, Louis Hodgson is right, Beth Flair. He said, I'd recommend the Simple Shot Scout LT. I would, uh, I would recommend the Scout LT or the, um, or the, actually, just to show you what the Scout LT looks like, I believe I got one here somewhere. 
Here's the new. This is the Scout LT. I would recommend this guy in a, in a minute. Uh, it's got a few options, and I'll tell you why. Uh, this is the Scout LT LE. This is a limited edition one, but even the plastic frames look the exact same. They're very durable. You can frame hit the shit out of them. They're not going to break. Now, you can shoot that in pinch grip. That's basically wrapping your hand around here or thumb brace. Uh, I, I tend to shoot both, actually, with this frame. I it It's good. It's uh, got a nice little ball in the end. Keeps your hand in place. Very, very comfortable uh, holding sh slingshot. It'll take a 20 millimeter uh, band at the tip. I've got a 22 on here. It's hanging over a little bit, but it still shoots just fine. Um, the good thing is you can shoot over the top. Over the top means uh, shooting over the top of the forks like this, even if you're holding it sideways. And um, it can also be sh shot in TTF, which is through the forks. So when you're shooting, the projectile will pass through the forks instead of over the top of the forks. And your, your, your band would be positioned like this. But these little things here, will, when, once you unscrew them, will rotate and you can shoot in two different ways. This, in my opinion, is probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, slingshot, uh, production slingshots for all beginners. Another really good one is the Wasp Enzo. This is a, a plastic frame. I believe they have some G10 models of it. Makes it a little bit nice. Um, and I got to tell you, uh, this is another one that could do the same thing. This one also has come to Eclipse. I have it set up for tubes at this point. So I do have the, uh, I do have it wrapped and tucked, but it does have clips. Uh, I got the clip right here. This is another one I highly recommend for new, for new shooters, but both these frames are great for anybody, uh, depending on your skill level. It doesn't really matter. They're fun frames, well-designed, and they have two options where you can shoot either um, TTF or OTT with them. So I highly recommend. And this one, I got it dolled up in, uh, I got it dolled up in some tubes and I did a, recently just did a video of me shooting tubes for probably the second or third time. It was nice. I'm a man of my word. I'm now in debt to you for the next three lifetimes. <laughs> uh, looking it up right now, Louie. Guns are not fun anymore. As a former trouble youth, good on you for helping. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it helped for a time, I guess. And uh, anyway, I'm not going to get too much into that, but um, I don't regret it. But I wish, I w in a way, I wish we couldn't, we could have done more, but we couldn't have done more. Daily Sling, a huge fan. I'm an experienced shooter and I own everything in the Simple Shot catalog. And I can tell you now is the best and most cost effective versatile sling shots on the market. Yes, sir. John with professional Karen Slayer. <laughs> I'm from Serbia, but living in the UK, just found your channel sub. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, John. Appreciate you, man. Professional Karen Slayer. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Worth its weight in gold. Eric won the new unreleased Scout LT, and it has the integrated clips on it. I told them I may steal it. I haven't even seen that new Scout LT. Actually, I should head on over to uh, over to Simple Shop pretty soon and see what they got going on there. I'm sure they got a few new things out there. And actually, I keep on forgetting the name of that freaking slingshot that they have there. Man, it's one of Selgin designs. It's kind of thin. It's kind of got a kind of cool shape to it. Anyway, I can't remember the name of it for, for the freaking life of me for some reason, but I wouldn't mind getting a quick version of that. After you insert the weight, it feels close to me. Actually, I have, the, I have the weight in my aluminum one too, and I really like the extra weight, and it feels great. Shades, I love you, dude. You're the best. Thanks for stopping in, buddy. Take it easy. And uh, give that dog a scratch on the ass for me. Funny enough, I put tubes on uh, my LT this morning. It did a good job with it. Yep. On the LT? I haven't tried it on the LT yet. i got to give that a whirl. 
You be sling shooting. Yes, sir. Is that Darth Maul's lightsaber? Above? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm from Quebec, Canada. Briggsy, what's going on, buddy? Dang, I just found out it's not ice fishing. Okay, thank God, dude. If you were going ice fishing in May, I was about to say goodbye to you forever. <laughs> now is not the time. That's for sure. The stylus. Thank you. Kevin, why can't I ever remember that freaking name, the stylus? They're not showing it yet. I'll send you a picture. The resolve. Nice. Shoot straight, talk straight. I try my best, dude. Okay. Are you taking off? Are you taking off, Jack? Tell us a joke. All right. What does a puppy and a nearsighted gynecologist have in common? A wet nose. There you go. They sell a keychain slingshot. Nice. Definitely. Can you tell us a dad joke? No, I got no more dad jokes. <laughs> but that's, that's all the jokes I got for you today. I went hard on that one, okay? <laughs> I'm here to the end. Huh? Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. Hello, I'm Alicia. How you doing, Alyssa? Yeah. You may want to wind back uh, the stream because he spoke uh, about the Skadalti. That was a good one. I'm glad you liked it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Do I have a wife? Yes, I do. Bye, Nash. Thanks for stopping in. You're making fun of my profession. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, well. How's your eyesight, buddy? <laughs> I have a joke. Go for it. I'm listening. Oh, man, that totally sucks. I'm just thinking about it now. My son... My son's been, uh, he was working at a place and uh, it just closed. And he's been out of work for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, I guess. Oh, a puppy raiser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he, uh, he applied for a bunch of jobs, went and wrestled at the Nationals, fractured his shoulder and his collarbone. And now he's, uh, he's got a job interview today. But, uh, Why is it always a fence around the graveyard? People are dying to get in. Okay, that was pretty good too. But uh, yeah, so he's going for a job interview this morning, but I don't think he'll get the job now because he's uh, he's injured. Sucks. Oh, you're back. That was fast. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna go. I hope he. Uh, I hope he still gets the job. It's gonna suck that if he uh, he's not gonna get the job because of that. But he's he's got to be. Uh, he's got no no activity for for six weeks. It sucks. We're gonna have to get him on the bike though to keep him keep him in good shape. Hey, I'm new here. What kind of uh, channel is this? Well, we do a lot of uh, talking, shooting. Um, we're slingshot shooters. So we all like to uh, shoot slingshots like this. Everywhere from backyard plinking people to uh, serious tournament shooters that go worldwide to shoot the slingshots. So there's a bunch of people on here to do some sling shooting, and this is what we do. 
we come on here and we chat about uh, whatever. What is my job? I work in the steel industry. Can I read this? Can we see that wooden slingshot frame behind you, please? Uh, which, this one? This one here? <coughs> I've got a few of them here. Oh, this one. <coughs> This one here is a, uh, I believe it's a Chola, Chola cactus. Yep. The maker of this guy just passed away, but uh, not too long ago, but I'm happy to have one of them. It's a really, really cool looking slingshot. It's basically a fork from a cactus. And the, uh, the guy who made this filled this up with, with resin. And it's uh, it's pretty badass. <laughs> Did I just say backyard shooting people? Yeah, maybe that was probably not the best the best way to say it. But um, let's say um, backyard plinkers. We'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> Do I use the Hornet slingshot? I have one. Uh, it shoots okay. But I'm not I'm not crazy about it. But yeah, it, it shoots nice. Yeah, somebody read my comment. Oh, okay. Oh, it's really, really, really nice. I'm actually I'm actually a little bit nervous to shoot it. Um, I may put some bands on this because it's a collector's piece. I may put some bands on it. Um, get some do some shooting with clays with it, and then put it away and never shoot it again. Um, just use it as a as a collector's item. It's very very beautiful, and uh, this is uh, definitely a collector's piece. And I'd be heartbroken if something happened to it. So, um, yeah, we may put some point four bands on here and do some uh, do some clay shooting with it. It's very very uh, thin though. It's uh, the fork width on this guy. I think it's I think it's somewhere around yeah. It's like eighty two millimeters. So it's very very narrow for me. Uh, it may be a long, uh, long draw uh, slingshot, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's a really, really cool slingshot, though. <laughs> they've, they've just convinced me to buy my first slingshot since childhood. Watch out. That's freaking awesome, dude. Hey, take care, Lone Slinger. Appreciate you. Thanks for stopping in. Always good to hear from you. How far does it shoot? Well, um, a slingshot can shoot anywhere from... Man. Didn't Chuck and Steele get a shot? It's probably a world record. He shot over 100, 100 meters. You can shoot far with these things. Can you go hunting with a slingshot? Yes, you can. If your skills are uh, good enough, you definitely can. I'm just worried that uh, if I frame hit that frame, uh, it will break and um, uh, it'll be upsetting. Do you hunt with slingshots? I've tried to hunt with slingshots, but I can't uh, do it legally where I live. So I have to go to another place and it's, uh, it's a bit far out of the way and it's not really, not really easy to find land. I love the beard. It's so alpha. I have stinky man syndrome. Okay. Defler, did you whoop. Defler, did you buy the Scott LT? I did. Nice. Which one did you get, uh, Defler? Uh, did you get the um, the aluminum one or did you get the uh, the poly one? Yeah, that's right. Chuck and Steele hit a can at 200 yards on the third shot. So that's uh, that's heavy duty. Comes with ammo and stuff. Oh, nice. I subbed. Thanks for subbing. Appreciate you, man. Any bow, bird, or rifle hunting? What state are you in? I'm in Texas myself. I'm in uh, Quebec, Canada. Um, I don't hunt. I do have a bow. I have my bow license for hunting and all that stuff, but actually getting the time in to be able to go and take animals ethically, uh, I don't have the time for that at the moment or, or the practice. 
but do you hunt with a slingshot? Uh, and anybody who hunts with a slingshot can hunt uh, many different types of birds, rabbits, squirrels, um, all kinds of rodents, uh, pest control, uh, that kind of thing. There's many things you can do with the with a slingshot. What part of their UFC, uh, the USA? Am I? I'm not in the USA. I'm in Canada. The Skittle Tito plastic one. It's a great frame, dude. Uh, I've got the. Uh, I've got two of them. I've got a black and I got a, uh, an orange. Both of them are great. Andy Low Plinks. Ranch's unit. <laughs> you know who I am? Whatever. 474. 47. No, I don't know who you are. Who are you? Tell us. Which part of Canada? I'm in mean, Quebec. What's the biggest slingshot you have? The biggest? Mm. The biggest actually is probably one that I made myself. Uh, actually, maybe not the biggest. I have one other one that's probably very close. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, this is probably the biggest one I got. This one's a hundred, a hundred millimeters wide, on or maybe more. Actually, I think it's a hundred and five. Yeah, it's a hundred, about a hundred and three millimeters wide, and. Uh, the second biggest one I have is another one designed by the same guy, which is Gamekeeper John. Um, it was one of the kits from him. Um, this this thing holds so well, but this is um, Gamekeeper John, and uh, yeah, uh, the other one is one that I made myself, which I can't seem to find at the moment. Any white-tailed deer there, sir? There's so many white-tailed deer, the white-tailed deer here. It's crazy. What are the laws on handguns? They actually banned handguns here. So all the people who own them now, um, all the people that own them now are uh, are able to keep them. But when they when they die or whatever, they're not allowed to sell them, and they're not uh, they're not allowed to. You're not allowed to buy them if you don't have them have one already, and you're not allowed to uh, when you pass away. You're not allowed to hand them off to somebody. So. The government's got some stupid uh, buyback law thing that they're doing here. And anyway, I'm hoping that uh, all that will change and uh, we can move forward with some normal laws and not this communist crap that we're dealing with at the moment. I can hit smaller targets with my Axiom X, but the LT is a great option. We're talking about slingshots, Sarah. Louis Hodgson, that's rude. What's rude, buddy? What I miss? Church doesn't start yet. Church has been going for two and uh, two hours and forty minutes, my friend. Yeah, buddy. Uh, let me tell you. I'm uh, I'm uh, I try to stay away from the whole political talk the best I can because once I get started, I can't stop and I get really freaking angry. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Do I um, do I participate in slingshot competitions? No, uh, I I haven't not yet. There's none in my area at all. In fact, I don't even know anybody near me who shoots at all. So uh, everything that I've learned, I've picked up on my own, and uh, that's it. Basically, this is what, what I've been doing is just basically what I've learned and picked up on my own. And, uh, yep, um, I'm hoping that uh, I'm going to try to get my try to get my passport uh, this year, and uh, hopefully maybe next year I can get down to the East Coast Slingshot Tournament. It's the closest one to me. It's about six, six or seven hours away uh, from where I live. And uh, also, for another reason, is I want to be able to go do some camping down in New York State uh, next year. So we'll see how that goes. But I used to, actually, just to let you know, I used to spend a lot of time down in the U.S. When I was a kid, we used to have a trailer. 
um, in this area uh, in Rose's Point, New York State. And uh, we used to go down there every single weekend. We were right on Lake Champlain. Uh, we'd spend the time there every single weekend. We'd drive down there on the Friday or the Thursday night. If we had an extra day off, we'd drive down there and spend the weekend in, uh, in New York State. And for the first, uh, <clears throat> for the first, I don't know, man, like 14 years of my life, we did that. We spent a lot of time down there. I spent all my time playing in the water, catching fish. And we had like a big swamp in the back. So we used to go catch snurdles, turtles and snakes and all kinds of stuff back there. Had a great time. And it was nice back then because um, Canadians like us, uh, we used to go down there all the time and we didn't need a passport. We just drove up to the thing. Where are you heading? This is where we're going. What's your name, address, phone number, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. And then boom, we were off. But then the... The, uh, I actually took it kind of personal. I was like, man, there's like, a, it's like I'm going to my cousin's house when I go to the U.S., you know, and uh, when they passed that law, they had to have a, a, a passport to, to go in there. It's like, fuck, dude, I'm not foreign. You know, <laughs> what the hell? You know, I practically lived here for the first 14 years of my life, you know, but uh, anyway, it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not going to hold it against y'all, you know, but, uh, you know, it was kind of like, ah, it sucks. It sucks. Uh, yes, sir. Hope for y'all safety and general up there. Yeah, I know. Me too, buddy. I'm hoping things get, uh, get fixed. Uh, you know what? That's my fourth Homer joke today. And, uh, I, I couldn't care less. Actually the Homer jokes and the, uh, and the, um, the Homer jokes and the, uh, and the, the Ronaldo Messi things. It's just nonstop. Any recommendations for ammo and bands? Yes, Absolutely. Uh, ammo, if you're going to be hunting, uh, I would I would stick to 9.5 millimeter steel. It's plenty. Uh, it's plenty. It's cheap. It's very common to find. And uh, I would uh, I'm going to throw this out here right now. I've got a few bands that I really really like, but Omega Slings. The white has a nicer draw, my opinion. Green seems to be a little bit faster. Um, but Get some of this, 0 0.65, 0 0.7. You'll be ripping that ammo real quick. Uh, I could never live in what to me seems cold. I'd like to see Ontario. Nah. My birthday's tomorrow. Snowing here this morning. Mark Townsend, what's going on, buddy? Where's it snowing? Yeah, well, this year, this year, uh, this winter, I wouldn't even say it got cold at all this year. It was pretty much, uh, I don't know, it was like warm all winter long. Usually, usually, uh, usually we get some shoot, uh, get a winter where we have about two, probably around two weeks where it's around minus 40. And then we get a good couple of weeks, maybe about a month of minus 30. And then like 30 days of minus 30, then the rest of it's like minus 20 or below and we have uh, a winter. So there's a couple of times where it's cold enough where you go outside with a cup of water and you throw it in the air and it's snow before it hits the ground. But uh, this year, I think we only reached minus 20 like once and everything else was warm, warm, warm. It was really bad. Not a, not a good, uh, not a, not a good winter at all. And usually on mild winters, we get a lot of snow this year. We got nothing. Oh, there we are. Yeah, we got nothing. Like I'm talking snow. Like if you, like a normal a normal winter snow wise for us is like six feet, and this year it was like uh, it was like snowy and like we had some snow on the ground and then there was nothing and there was snow on the ground and there was nothing. It was like really messy disaster of a winter, and we're gonna have really really low waters this year. It's not gonna be good. You don't look like Homer. Hey, Homer's a stud, dude. My screen. Oh, Montana. Yeah, you guys get to get a good winter, eh, this uh, every year? Yeah, I would use a uh, point, point, uh, point 0.7 points. Uh, yeah, probably point 0.7 if you're planning on doing some hunting with 9.5 steel. 
0.65 if you're a short draw. If you're a long draw, forget what I just said. If you like to shoot like stretched out like like this, I would shoot um, I would shoot uh, 0 0.4 or 0.5. You're it's basically the same thing uh, with a with a rifle, for example. If you have a 357 uh, caliber uh, bullet uh, in a handgun, um, it will be slower than a 357 caliber um, uh, in a rifle. Inside the rifle, your 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 ammo is under load, turning down the rifling uh, at a greater distance, and it picks up more speed. In a handgun, it's a shorter distance where it's under load and it doesn't pick up as much speed. It's basically the same thing, same principle. When you're shooting, when you're shooting short draw, you've got like in my case, uh, 29.5 inches to get started. But if I shoot long draw, I've got much much more. So you need less. Uh, you need less. Um, help me out here. You need less uh, less band thickness because it's got more time to accelerate. Oh, it's your birthday, Kevin. Happy birthday, buddy. Man. Yeah, happy birthday, Andy. Definitely, I'd recommend buying a catch box of the ammo. You'll save a fortune. Yep, hundred percent. Very good idea. You could also make a you could also make a catch box out of an old Rubbermaid container or a water a water barrel or all these things. It uh, it makes a a good uh, good idea. Yeah, dang, no rain here either. Also, fire in North Texas. Yeah, I saw that on the news. I was checking that out. Bad news. Uh, cattle land, lots of stuff gone. Uh, thankfully, I'm not in North Texas. I saw some weird things about this cattle land thing, too. Apparently, uh, uh, like government officials of some kind were showing up and burning the rest of the land or something like that, like something freaking weird. I, I don't know if any of that's true or if it's just uh, internet bullshit or not, but. Shy. Hi, Shy. Yeah, so I think in the upcoming video, we're going to, ah, oh, there it is. Looking for this. It's my XO. I wanted to get some tubes onto this guy. I did the, did the video of this guy recently and did a lot of, a uh, lot of fun shooting with it. But I think, um, when I put the wrap on this guy on my XO, this is another one from Wasp. It's another great, great slingshot. I love this little guy. Um, I'm going to uh, set this guy up for tubes and see how, uh, how the tubes shoot on this guy too. Uh, even though the fork width on them is a little bit n more narrow, but man, I did some great shooting with this slingshot and it feels great with that wrap on it. I think I'm going to complete this side, maybe even the whole thing. I don't know. Holy, what the hell do people use one minute? I don't know, dude. I really don't know. One millimeter bands are just crazy. I bought some in the beginning when I first started out because a lot of people were shooting these stupid heavy bands. But just keep in mind, if you're, when you're, um, when you get yourself a gun and you're shooting, the heavier the trigger pull, the more, the more damage you do to your, to your aim. <coughs> it's the same thing with slingshots. The lighter your draw, the more comfortable you are in your draw, and the easier it is for you to hold in position, the more accurate you're going to be, the more precise you can be. So I used to shoot earlier on when I first started out 0.65 bands. Then one day I just decided, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to order some more of these 0.65. I like them. I screwed up and I bought 0.5. I got them like, ah, oh, what am I going to do with this? And you know, it's going to suck, blah, blah, blah. Wow. What a difference. I, I literally have a video somewhere where I, I shoot 10 shots with 0.65 and I drop it down to 10, point, uh, 10 to 0.5 and I made a huge difference in my draw weight because I dropped it down by four or five pounds. That's a big difference. And anyway, 
there's no need for shooting that kind of that kind of weight. Am I allowed to stay here? I'm asking because I'm 11. I got told to get out of someone's life. Shy, usually we keep it pretty clean. Um, I have no problem with you staying here if you want to, but I would definitely ask your parents. What's my favorite tool? Mm, like Sunshot, you mean? Cardboard box stuff with old towels. Or what's not to make a good catch box? Yeah, there's lots of things you can use, Kenny. You're absolutely right. Cardboard box is easy. All kinds of things you can use. Hi, Emma. How long will this stream last? I want to go make a coffee, but I don't want to miss too much. I don't know. I, I think we'll probably go for another 10 minutes or so. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Usually once we get started on these things, it, uh, they just keep going forever. <laughs> I don't know. We still got 52 people in here willing to stare at this ugly mug. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I think we'll probably go for another 10 minutes or so. Am I okay? Stay the day. I'm back, Toxic Tom. What's going on, buddy? What's your hot sauce brand? It's called West Island Fire. You can find us on Facebook. That's some quality knowledge. Deathlair, I have a whole bunch of information on there that'll that can on my channel that can help you out in my playlist called Quick Tips. I've got all kinds of stuff on fork widths, on release tips, on there's a whole bunch of things. And on how to tune your bands properly so you can get the most out of your elastic. It, it might be worth uh, watching. Seems to do okay. Eight to 10 pound draw weight for a full butterfly. 9.5 steel. Yeah. Where am I from? I'm from Canada. Where are you from? Snowy. Yeah, but that'll definitely, uh, Death Flare, that'll definitely get you going. Once you start, uh, once you start shooting, getting your, getting your eye tuned into where you want to, where you want to shoot from, my God, you'll be, you'll be destroying things in no time. Uh, I subscribe so I can study up before my frame gets here. Thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate you. And if you, if you, uh, seriously, if you have any questions, man, don't feel shy. Eh? Shoot me a message just to let me know who you are and I'll, uh, in uh, Facebook or Instagram or anything like that, and I'll uh, happily help you out. And just just to just to warn you, Death Flare, I tend to go full scientist sometimes <laughs> on this stuff. So if I get too boring and you want the Coles Notes version, just let me know, okay? <laughs> I'll I'll. Uh, I'll shorten that up for you so you don't have to go through the whole thing. But I have a video where I weigh out on a scale my ammo, my bands, everything. I tune everything up and I do a shooting. And the difference between the two pouches is 0.2 grams. And then I measure the speed difference, the average speed difference through a chronograph to find out what the difference is with pouch weight with the same ammo, with the same weight, with the same everything. I go super, like, it's kind of stupid. But it actually shows what kind of information uh, or what kind of uh, ammo speed you can get the max out of uh, the max out of your ammo speed using tapers and all this stuff. I go I go ballistic on it, but some of it will really really help you out when you're looking for speeds and everything like that. Hey, what's going on, Mister Willie? We're all doing great, my friend. Hi to all Canadians. CKS6 South 6. What's going on? Yeah, I went a little bit bonkers on that one. Uh, one of my favorite vids is pouch weight when we, when we did that, but I was actually surprised to see that it would actually, it, it, it would actually see, um, <laughs> I was kind of surprised that it would actually make that much of a difference in, in uh, feet per second on, uh, on that. Yeah, well, you know what? You know, Kevin writes here, unfortunately, I like the bigger pouches. 
that's okay. It's just the materials that you choose that will make a bit, a bit of a difference. So if you go to uh, a microfiber pouch, for example, it will be lighter than a, than a, than a uh, heavier pouch, uh, than a, a heavier leather pouch. So when you do that, if you're, if you're able to get used to using a microfiber pouch, you will gain some speed on your ammo, even if that pouch is the exact same model as the other one, but lighter. Hey, Brad, what's going on, buddy? Yeah, if you're going to pinch in front of the ball, you'll need a longer pouch, that's for sure. Oh. By the way, Brad, that little message you sent me there uh, yeah, this morning or yesterday got my spidey senses tingling a little bit. It sounds like a like a really great idea. I just got to get my passport uh, taken care of, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll talk we'll talk some more on that. I'll just need a date, um, but uh, I got to uh, I got to get that worked out and see how long it's going to take, and then we can we can go working on there. But that sounds that sounds like a lot of fun, buddy. And being able to meet a lot of you guys in person, I got a whole bunch of hugs to give you guys. I'll tell you that much. Oh, story of. Oh, you can determine when. Oh, cool. Might have to be summer sometime, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a. Uh, so, wow, Kevin, you pinch in front of the ball. I I don't pinch in front of the ball ever. I find it's, if I if I pinch from in front of the ball, then my um, my my release is kind of sloppy. Name a car for an edit, please. Why do I always get these? You know what? I'm going to handle this one. Oop. See you later. Mikey, how you doing, bro? Smoke's here, too. Holy smokes. Say hi, Penny, for a, a cat nap and a cat nap. What? Hi, Penny. What's going on, Mikey? <laughs> Mikey and Smo bought some trolls with him. <laughs> What's going on? If you have a few moderators, we can clean up the chat. I have a, I have a whole bunch of them. They're, just, they're, they're tough to, uh, they're tough to get going. Would you be interested in a wrench there, Mister, Mister Brad? If you're interested, you, you got the wrench. If you're not interested, just don't accept it, bro. Can you tell me what the live stream is about? We're, we're just talking slingshots. We're, we're slingshot enthusiasts here. And uh, anyway, that's it. All right, Mr. Uh, Northeast Slingshots, you've been deputized, and you look fantastic in blue. <laughs> Check the seal somewhere, pinches in front, too. Yeah, but you see... Just, just uh, there's a difference between long draw and short draw, guys. When you're shooting short draw, you don't have that much time for your bands to to straighten out. So if you're pin if you're pinching in front of the ball or your elbows down or your elbows too high, for example, your your shot doesn't have time to to straighten out. In long draw, you've got a lot more time with that ball under load for it to to go from this to 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 straighten out. So it does make a difference. When I shoot long draw, I also shoot in front of the ball and I hold the ball back there and I'm not worried about it. Short draw, not so much. I have to pinch the ball. So when I'm pinching that ball, when I'm pinching that ball, when, actually, I'll show it to you. I know, I know I've done this a couple of times before, but I'll show it to you. So when I when I pinch, 
I'm holding the ball and I want my pouch to be open. See that? My pouch is open. If I pinch in front of the ball and I'm like this, when I'm releasing it, it ends up speed bumping around my, my, my finger bone and I have an issue. Now, there are some great shooters out there that shoot this way. On short draw, I can't. When I started uh, just pinching the ball and when I'm pulling back and it's actually holding open, my pouch is open, it just slips. When I release the ball, it just pops right into, um, it just releases. It doesn't speed bump off my, off my finger, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> yeah, definitely not a great tool for self-defense, but, uh, you know, 7.30 a.m. for Mikey. Woo. But some pepper balls on the slingshot seem fun. Oh, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, that would be pretty crazy. Yeah, I fired that into an old backpack. <laughs> we'll be fine. I'm intending on using the slingshot for self-defense. Pepper spray. How you doing there, Mr. Mikey? Oh, it's good to see you, buddy. 7.30 a.m. I keep on forgetting you guys are uh, you guys are a couple hours behind us, eh? Still trying to work out my high fork hits. Yesterday was better, but still getting them. Yeah, you know I'm, I'm waiting for my uh, for my pouches to come from you guys. It should be here uh, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, and I'm going to start giving that a try. Uh, I figured I was going to use the, I thought I was going to use the EXO at first, but I don't want to put any dings in it because I know what's going to happen. So I think I'm going to use the uh, the Wasp uh, Enzo for that. And we'll we'll see how it goes. But I don't know how, how I'm going to figure it out yet, uh, where I'm going to put the anchor, uh, how it's going to work out exactly. Anyway, it should be fun. It should be fun to test out. But those high pouches are going to be uh, be key for doing this properly. What was my first slingshot? Oh man, do I even have it here? Still, I have. I still own it. I think I might have it somewhere. Ah, I don't know where it is, guys. I can't show you my first slingshot, but it was my first video. So if you go all the way back down to the bottom of this, all the way down to my first video, it's the uh, it's the uh, top archery slingshot. Uh, I can't remember even the name of it anymore. I still have it somewhere, but I can't find it anymore. That's going to go on my wall of fame when I get this wall all set up. I know, uh, I can't remember who it was who was asking me if I had any modern looking slingshots, but I just found the one I wanted to show you. So um, take a look at this one. This is called the Vortex from Sniper Sling. Pretty cool looking slingshot. Something definitely very different from what you see, but this is the Vortex. Probably my most modern looking slingshot. Very different from a lot of things that are out there. <laughs> Tio's favorite slingshot is from Pro. Yeah, the Canter. My favorite slingshot. I'd rather shoot a boomerang than that thing. My EXO has taken 25 fork hits in the last two weeks in the exact same spot, and it barely shows any damage. Wow. Is it aluminum one or one of the plastic ones you got? I know the plastic is, like, indestructible, but I'm afraid the aluminum is going to dent, and that's what I got the EXO Pro there. I don't want to ding it. 
Do I own a Torx slingshot? I did, and uh, I traded it to uh, my buddy Hoggy. He's got it. Actually, where is Hoggy today? I haven't seen him. Can you say uh, happy anniversary, friends? Carter and Arden Voss. Happy anniversary to Carter and Arden Voss. Ah, okay. Yeah, because uh, I know when I originally had my, uh, my first Wasp uh, Unifox, uh, you can you can actually beat that thing with a hammer, and nothing's ever going to happen to it. I don't know what the hell he makes those things out of, but they're like pretty much indestructible. That's why I think I'm going to use my uh, my Enzo. My Enzo will be pretty cool to give that a try on, even though this is one of the prototypes. I'm I'm not sure. Ah, it'll take it. It'll take it. I'm not worried. Yeah, these Exos are just so freaking nice, eh? The pros, they're gorgeous. Man, that green is some serious stuff. I'm afraid to hit my Exo Pro too. Do I own an Axiom Ocularis? Yeah, actually, I've got the Axiom Ocularis. Uh, le limited edition one somewhere it is the prettiest slingshot i think i own the color of it is absolutely gorgeous i got the one in the in the uh, cranberry i don't know where i've put it but i hate the tips and i never shoot it <sighs> new drinking game on my house we shotgun a beer and the last one to finish this gets the gets a pepper, <laughs> pepper bulb. Yeah, that that, that that sounds like a good time. Hey, what's up? El Drago. What's going on, buddy? Where's the green port five? Now, I'm actually looking to get one of the heavier uh the heavier bands from uh, Omega Slings pretty soon. I'm hoping to get the uh, maybe a point seven or something like that. I want to do some uh I want to get to start getting some testing done, um, and uh, hopefully get some uh, band testing done because now the weather is starting to get a little good, and I can't shoot indoors anymore. Uh, so once we get that uh, set up, I'm going to start doing some uh, some band testing so we can get some decent weather speed tests going on. To to be fair, because if I'm out if I'm out testing bands in in uh, in cold weather, they are going to be slower than they are in hot weather. And uh, I want to be fair to the Omega guys and uh, definitely show what they got going on. Just to put the board of play in China and uh, bring the latex back to myself. Very nice. Tree fork, what's going on? 0.7 is a versatile, a versatile uh, elastic. You can really trim them down to shoot eight mil steel if you want to, and you can really jack them up to uh, um, make them fat, and chunky tapers, and get a do some great shooting with nine point five. And actually, the the fastest bands I've ever tested for nine point five millimeter steel was shooting um, point. Uh, there were point seven black sniper sling, and I was getting three hundred and fifteen feet per minute uh, per second on on that elastic. Uh, with that ammo, and that is stupid fast for a slingshot. Shooting, a, I can't remember how many grams. Uh, I think it was like eight. It's like an eight gram projectile. Eight, I think it's eight for a um, for a nine point five millimeter steel. And my God, was that fast, fast and vicious. I was ripping it through both sides of a steel can, no problem with the with that elastic. So I want to try the uh, Omega slings. Um, I want to try the Omega Slings uh, 0.7 and see how it goes. Especially for the 9.5 because it are 3.5 grams. Okay, that's right. But I couldn't I couldn't remember. No, the, the bands didn't last long from uh, from Sniper Slang. What's my name? Louie, my name is Mark.
I was able to get 283 feet per, uh, per second uh, with 11 millimeter steel with 0 0.55, 26 to 17, 260. Okay, but you're a long draw shooter, right? That makes sense. Yep, 315 feet per second with short draw on 9.5 steel. With Sniper Sling Black, 0.7. Taper from 20, I think it was 25.15 I used. Might be 24.12, can't remember. I think it was 25.15. That's, that's deer hunting speed, I know. I couldn't believe it. When I, I, when I actually filmed the, 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 the chronograph, because you know how I, how I do my thing. I check the draw weight, and then I, then I do the penetration test, and then I, I get into the speeds. And when I got into the speeds, I was like, nah, can't be. And I actually cut it out of the video and I retested it a second time. I'm like, no, nah, there's got to be something wrong with it. I shut it off and I put it back on and I went and I tested some 100% point, uh, no, um, uh, South Wales Caddies 0.75. And I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> it is right. Because that was the speeds I got with the, with the other one. I had to, I had to confirm it because I, I, it wouldn't, it wouldn't click in my head, but it was fast. Like if you were, if you were out, I can't imagine what that would do to a rabbit head. Like it's, it's stupid. But I had a hard time shooting with that because the draw weight was so heavy. I think it was like fourteen pounds, something like that. Draw weight was so heavy, and it was just I was struggling to to hold, to hold it down. But the speeds on it were stupid fast. Oh, decapitation for sure. In through one side, out through the other, head explosion, the whole deal. It would have been terrible. Kushboo, dude, I'm new here. Welcome aboard, my friend. Hi, man. It's an honor to have stumbled across your channel, Mark. Uh, I'm now your new biggest fan, and I'm in debt to you for three lifetimes. I'll be off now. Goodbye. Hey, thanks for stopping in, Louie. I appreciate you, buddy. You take it easy. I like to speak with anybody who's cool, man. So if you're cool, I'll be happy to have you around. My typical speed uh, with a target setup is like 275. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, Smo, uh, I do tend to um, max out my bands when I'm doing these uh, these tests. I want to show people what the true potential is of the elastic, uh, but I don't I don't recommend anybody maxing out their bands. The life of any band maxed out is not good. So what I like to do, <clears throat> what I like to do is I do that. And basically, I, I know you've seen many of my videos, and I explained that when, when you max out your bands, you're going to get maximum speed, but you will not get maximum longevity. And the more you add to it, uh, the less the speed goes. So basically, if we're, if we're looking at a, at a chart, and here is the center, the more you move one direction, the more you move to the other direction, it, ma it makes a difference. And sure enough, um, sure enough, um, we got, uh, I mean, <clears throat> I maxed them out to get the max speed, but it, it's much better to, to slow her down, reduce your draw weight, which makes you more accurate. I mean, I'm don't need to explain any of this to you. You know, all this crap, but me too. Usually that's why one of my favorite bands for the longest time was Gong Chi. Uh, because what's my name? My name is Mark Kushabu. Thank you. So basically what I, um, I liked those bands for is because they had the, less, the least draw weight for uh, the speed that I was getting. I was shooting around 275 with a, with a band set that was made to, 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 I guess, give me this much stretch for my draw length, and it would stop back here, and I was getting really good life out of it, and that's what I, what I went with. Now Omega Slings, um, I, get, I, I can't kill these bands. They just keep shooting forever which is just awesome, but that's it. I, I, can't, I can't get enough of those uh, Omega Slings bands. I, I love them. They shoot forever. You get really good speed out of them, and performance is great. How often do I replace my cutting mat? 
uh, well, I actually, right on the center bit, which is probably where I use it the most, I do have a little slice in it somewhere. But all I did was I turned my mat around, and now I've got like another three years out of this thing. So it's very rare that I that I do it. And I'm always using this the, the, the centimeter side. If I wanted to flip it over, I just have to uh, figure out what everything is in inches, and I can do with that on, on that side too. So um, not very often. So if I'm using the center line and I end up having a problem with my cutting mat, I just move everything over one square, and that's it. Problem solved. <gasps> Um, I've had this mat for, I don't know, a uh, couple of years anyway. And the only reason why I switched it from the other one is because the other one was too small. I wanted a larger mat. How does a Mega Latex Longevity compare to Simple Shot Black? Simple Shot lasts a really, really long time. Um, and I haven't been able, I haven't, I haven't killed an Omega Slings band yet. Put the... So just chew on that for a second, okay? Um, this set of bands that I have on this guy is the second set of bands that I've had on this frame. The only reason why I changed them is because the original set that I put on here was 0.45, and I had a cold spell come up, and I wanted to shoot this, and it was minus 10 or so when I was shooting, and on the 0.45, it was too slow. So I switched it to the 0.5. In the minus 10 weather which shot great so how does it compare um i don't know to be fair i haven't shot i haven't shot any simple shot in a while but simple shot has some of the longest lasting bands that i've that i've ever shot they're really really they good longevity it's fantastic omega slings i think are probably the longest shooting band i've ever had ever and on this set here, I've got probably somewhere around a thousand shots on this set. And look at this. The perfect, the perfect. And hold on. There was another band. Uh, what was that other one I was shooting? Where the hell did it go? Oh, I, th I think I left it downstairs. I've got my Titan Hunter set up with Omega Slings. I've got this guy set up with Omega Slings. And this is the 0.45. Is this more Omega Slings or this one actually might be? Uh, no, this is Omega Slings 0.45. I just got them cut long. I've done a whole bunch of shooting with this guy too. And they're still, they're still going strong. I have not killed a band set yet. I have not had one pouch tear or anything yet. It's, it's insane. Yeah, Ethan's back. Now we're uh, Bob uh, Boybot12. We're just chatting about slingshots. Yes, sir, Kevin. Simple shot is a stiff draw. Omega is way more buttery and smooth. Longevity, not too sure. Uh, lasts long enough for more than a couple hundred shots. I shot a set of 0.5 Omega White this week and it lasted a thousand shots noble. No joke. I'm not I'm not bullshitting you at all. Those 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 bands are uh they're stupid. I've got well over a thousand shots on those things. Not a problem. Uh, simple shot bands I've been using all year and have 700 elongation. Not sure why everyone thinks they're so stiff. No, I, I just find, uh, I don't find them um, too, too stiff. Uh, I'm a 0.5 guy for sure on simple shot if I'm going to shoot it. I find it's a little heavier than probably my um, my Gong Chi or, or my Omega Slings for the 0.5. It's
There we go, guys. Does it sound back? <laughs> we can't hear you. Is the sound back? Yep. Okay, we're good. Yeah, I lost my other mic. I have no idea where it went. And uh, we just burnt through uh, three hours of that one. So can't complain about the battery life. Three hours and 20 minutes. Man, it's a lot of a lot of freaking shit talking I've been doing, huh? No, no, small. When I say uh, it's slightly heavier, I'm talking like maybe a pound, maybe a pound or two max. Yep, it is pretty stretchy. It's great stuff. Can't say anything really. Can't say anything bad about Simple Shot at all. The only reason why I don't use Simple Shot more often um, in in a lot of things is just that the shipping's expensive. Shipping is expensive, and the shipping takes long. That's the only reason why I don't use Simple Shot. <clears throat> for us in Canada, anyway, I'm sure it's different for you guys who live in the United States. Justin, Jenny, what's up, dude? What's up to you too, dude? Yeah, you see what Mikey says here is probably the best thing uh, and the most important thing. He says, all the latex these days is great in my opinion. Just got to find one of the characteristics you prefer. 100%. All latex is good this, this time. The only thing I found with certain latexes that are out there is, yes, some of them are good. Some of them shoot great. And what I found is some of them just fail faster than others. And that for me, that that has become, I'm, I've all, I'm always a performance before longevity guy, but some of them were just freaking bad. Like Jinpu, I'm never touching that shit again. Like I'm done with that. I know some people have had luck with it. I have not had luck with it. I know long draw shooters tend to get more shots out of them than short draw shooters. And that's because they're not maxing them out as much, but there's like Jinpu. I'm not touching it. Um, the uh, GZK green see-through stuff, not touching it. There's a few of them that I just don't like. And uh, anyway, that's it. No, no, that, that other mic, actually that other one, I have two mics in that, in that kit too. And that whole kit, I can't find it anywhere. I don't know where it's gone. I was actually looking for that one this morning. I agree with that mic, except for Super Slung Black. Jin Poo Poo. Yeah, I'm not a fan, man. I'm not a fan of Jin Poo. Oh, that's another one. The, the, the Chuante or whatever the hell it's called. That's another one, Smo. I tested that thing out. The draw on it was beautiful. Beautiful. But I went out and I tested that in the woods. I didn't even... I didn't even tune the bands at all. All I wanted to do was feel how they felt. So I cut... Width wise, and the, the the elongation on was super long too. The max elongation I think was like seven or seven and a half. I cut that at I cut that at um, at fifteen centimeters. Attached a pouch and attached to my frame. And when I drew that, I was able to go from here to all the way back here with that. And I never even got two hundred shots out of that elastic. Absolute trash. Absolute trash. Sniper Sling Black is getting revised. Well, that's a good thing because um, it should make a big difference. As for the Sniper Sling Green, the green, the performance-wise of the green, I really, really liked it. It was, it shot great. Uh, Odfa, I'm sorry, my friend. I can't understand what you're writing there. And I'm hoping at some point YouTube will um, put a translator on the comments so we can answer you. But I'm sorry, dude, if you don't understand what I'm saying, I appreciate it. Um, I apologize. But dang, it sucked. Man, did it ever suck. And I tried everything. I tried different different attachments on that red stuff. I tried um, I tried everything. I tried a new, a new rotary cutter. I, I, I moved my mat over. I used a different spot on my mat. I tried everything and nothing worked. Seems a longer elongation like uh, so called Caddis Point 4 had a 750 elongation. 
uh, work magic at 30, 15, uh, 240, still less, 10 pounds draw, 325 feet per second for 945 seal. Wow. I actually shot some of the, um, the so-called caddies 0.4, and I actually found it a little bit too late. <laughs> uh, I love rocks. See you later, bro. Oop. You can go pound rocks, buddy. How are you, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing, my friend? What about story slingshot? Oh, we've been doing a lot of uh, talking uh, about uh, slingshots. We've been doing... Um, We've been talking about all things slingshots, actually. Uh, everything, some of the technical stuff, some hunting, all that stuff. We've been chatting about all that stuff today. Sorry, I was feeding my dogs. No worries, buddy. I used a who roll time to figure out. My goodness, I couldn't figure it out. Is that these in the background? Hell yeah. Yeah, these is here. Oh, right here. Yeah, we got we got D's and the next American president right up here is uh, Slingshot Tony, right beside D's. Yeah, too late for wide taper pot compensated. Yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting. I'm I'm kind of curious to see what it's gonna be like with that point four um, from South Wales. If I put it on the uh, as a taper of 25-15 on my Titan Hunter and shoot with that. I bet you that thing's screaming fast after. The Void. Tony 2024. Let's go. Tony. <laughs> yeah. I get to see him up on the eye patch and he's talking, you know, dressing the nation and the eye patch keeps switching every time they switch to a commercial. Oh man, the peeling mustache. That would be awesome. Still a better choice. <laughs> Little secrets. Omega bands are infused with frog skin. That's why they're so good. <laughs> it's got, yeah, it's got to be true. <laughs> oh, it's got to be true. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's why that's why they're good in the rain. Bear, what's going on, buddy? Hey you go, man, we've been at it so long today. I'm surprised you guys are still here. Still got 50 people in the chat. I've been shooting my mouth off for three and a half hours. Oh, boy. I, I got to tell you, Mikey, my, uh, my troll game has been on point today. They have been more relentless than I can remember ever. It's crazy. Yeah, it doesn't matter what they're infused with. They're just that damn good. Absolutely. Ball just jumps to the target. <laughs> rip it, rip it. Yeah. Oh, man, it's just too much fun. Just too much fun. Ooh, boy. Yeah, it's going to be pretty fun today. I got a little bit of, uh, little bit of stuff to do, and then hopefully I can... Uh, Hopefully I can get up and do some shooting later on today. Have a little bit of fun. I gotta get that uh, Spitfire back out there again today and do some shooting. And I gotta get that uh, that giveaway update uh, up. Uh, the winner announced. We gotta do that today also. Ramadi Usman, what's up, buddy? Yeah, at least you're not taking my picture and you do something. Well, you never know what can happen, eh? Yeah, you know what's crazy, Mikey? On Facebook, I actually had a dude take my dad's picture and create a profile. And then he started sending me pictures. Now, the funny thing is, me and my dad have a kind of an odd way, <laughs> an odd way of talking to each other, okay? So, sure enough, he's like, he's like, um, Hey, ATO Mark, how are you today? I'm like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> this, this is not my dad at all, you know? <laughs> and <clears throat> and uh, quite often I'll get like a, hey fucker, how's your belly for spots? <laughs> this is what I get from my dad. I don't, I don't get the, hey ATO Mark, how are you today? And it was all like broken English and shit. And <laughs> I'm kind of like, 
I, my, my answer right away was like, fuck, dude, are you serious, bro? Because <laughs> guaranteed, guaranteed you're not my dad. I said, fuck you for pretending to be my father. Anyway, I think I screenshot it and put it up on my Facebook and then reported the douchebag. But this guy was going around trying to go through my dad's uh, friends list and actually sending it to all these people. I'm like, there's no way that's my dad. No way. <laughs> yeah, but imagine. You know, this goes on all the time, you know? Ooh, and I had, an, I had another guy too recently. He he, uh, he started following me and uh, was asking me to click all kinds of links. I'm like, no, nah, dude, not going to do it. See you later. You've been blocked. Peace. Yeah, but there's so many of them out there, man, that are doing this kind of crap. And I just, nah, I'm not doing it. Yeah, scammers, scammers, scammers everywhere. And there was a point where people were coming at me hard with that stuff, man. On Facebook, it was like, I was getting like, uh, I was getting messages and friend requests from people, like 50 of them a day. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And they all seem to be from Africa or something. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on here, but there's no way I'm that popular in the, in the continent of Africa. <laughs> there's no way. And every time I would go and check their, their profiles, it was like, it was like one guy in a circle picture, another guy in a circle picture. Same guy, and it's just nonstop. So now, whenever I get a friend request on Facebook, and this goes to the rest of you, <laughs> if they come in and I see like just like one or two pictures, and it's like it seems like a bot post, I, I don't friend you. And I'm sorry if you're legit, but I can't take the risk of just adding all these spammers and scammers into my into my uh, in, in in you know in, onto my my page. It, it just causes too much trouble because it's constant. It's like Man, if it's this bad for me, somebody who's got like 8,000 subscribers, a relatively small channel on YouTube, imagine what it's like for guys like Joe Robinette or whatever it is who's got millions of, of viewers. You know, these these guys that are that are out there that have all these channels. And, you know, they have Facebook things and this and that and Twitter. It must be terrible. Ten thousand plus memes of mine. Man. It's crazy. It's just crazy how many people are out there scamming and trying to figure all this stuff out. And it's funny, you know, hey, can you clink this? Yeah, not today, bitch. I'm not doing it. I'm not clicking any of that shit. I'm trained in that stuff from work. I have to be careful in what I what I click on and what I don't click on. And you're not getting me with that crap. Uh-uh. Get out of here. It's kind of scary. It is kind of scary, actually, how many people are out there scamming online. Can you send me the link? What link? <laughs> I'm not sending any links, bro. Yeah, you have no choice. You have no choice. And it's gotten kind of spooky a little bit because you imagine, you know, like you put a lot of work into something like this. Some guy hacks your account. The next thing you know, boom, he's in your YouTube. He's uh, stolen your account. YouTube won't do shit for you. So if somebody... If somebody takes your account and you're you're uh, you're trying to get your monetization back and all this stuff and you have to be able to prove it's you and this guy's already changed your your address and your phone number and all this stuff you're, you're screwed you're screwed. <clears throat> yeah, I use a work phone. They uh, they train us to. Yeah, we have no choice. Twice a year, I have to go through this stupid training, and uh, we you know. What kind of what kind of scam is this? Is this a phishing scam? Is this a you know? It's like oh my god, it, it gets kind of ridiculous. Roar, Edward, what are you roaring about, buddy? It'd be great if you could roar at that like button a little bit. I would appreciate you that. That would that would be great. Yeah, we get I get so many of these scammers, and a lot of them too on uh, on Instagram. It's just we're, we're just ridiculous. Actually, it, it got it got really bad to a point where when I did that, uh, I like this up. Well, thanks, buddy. That <laughs> I love you, with dinosaur. I think it might be the. Um, uh, 
I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, Chuck is stealing me giving the thought right out of my head. <laughs> Corbin, a kid who does everything. Hey, that's cool. Back to slingshots. Yes, sir. Breaking records with his live. Yeah, we've been tearing it up. I don't know how we've done so far today there, but uh seems like we're doing okay. A lot of people in here watching. I think I got up to 70 views. I said 70 people in here at one point, but it didn't last very long. Hey, Double D's, what time are you going on? Uh, you going live, buddy? I'm going to watch. We can get off here. You can go live. Everyone go watch these. I've been in here long enough. I don't want to take up any more anybody else's time here. Yeah, you know what? Let's, let's end this. Everybody, head on over to Double D's channel. Check him out. Like and subscribe. His channel. And uh, check him out live. He's an awesome dude. All right, everybody. We're going to wrap this one up. Head on over to D's channel. Show him some love. And uh, all the rest of you, thanks a lot for stopping by. You guys take care. Stay safe. Get on practice. Be good to each other. I'll see you again soon. I love you guys. You're freaking awesome. Bye for now. See you at D's. Take it easy.